welcome back to Resonance Arcade. I've just ran the intro again, by the way, guys, just so you're ah. aware. Um, nice. Yeah, sorry, my mic wasn't on. Right. Oh, everyone on Skype could hear me. That's why people were responding to me. Anyway, I was talking about um, the games I'd played, and I've forgotten what they were now. The Witcher. Witcher? Yeah, The Witcher. Um, I've, uh, I'm not even going to repeat myself, actually. The Witcher, I'm going to play it through so I can get to two and play three because I quite fancy those games, but The Witcher 1 I'm not that keen on. Um, been playing Gears of War and Metal Gear Solid, obviously, with Resonance Arcade and having millions of technical issues. And, uh, yeah, so... This week's show, as I <laughs> said a minute ago, this week's show is about game movie tie-ins. Media uh, tie-ins, specifically. Yeah, get, well, movie media, we, we, with books and m maybe even music if we happen to talk about it. But anything that kind of, you know, games that are movies and movies that are games, because both have, have happened, usually uh, pro producing a terrible result, in my opinion. But, uh, yes. Mm. We can see your biases already then, Chris. Yeah. You really don't seem to like the licensed tie-in, do you? Some of them. I mean, I'm, I like the Batman games, but I don't. they're not tied to a specific movie. They, they specifically weren't tied to a specific movie because mm -hmm. of the... Uh, the I, think I remember reading some interviews a, a good while back. Uh, was it Arcane Studios that did it? I don't um, know. Rocksteady. Rocksteady. Well, maybe they, were, maybe they were part of Arcane. I'm not sure. I know that that was, it was basically, it was again like every other people person that has a go at Batman, that was their Batman. So it wasn't anybody else's thing. They did their stab at it. You know, they got a lot of the voice actors from the 90s cartoon, which was great, but it was very much their thing and their version of that world and that character. Yeah, so I mean, you have kind of two main types of uh, these media, to, well, the movie times, don't you? You have ones that follow the story of the movie or try to. And you have the ones that just use the like the franchise and then create their own offshoot from it. Yeah, I'm I'm just wondering what it is that that puts you off so kind of quickly, Chris, because it seems to be that you almost just assume that they're going to be rubbish now. Now I know that in the '80s and the '90s that movie tie-ins tended to be rubbish. Um, they, they were just cash cows, basically. A movie was out in the cinema, so they'd make a quick platformer to go with it. Mm, yeah, is that the kind that, of just feel? Right. That's my redeeming memory of, of them, and I don't tend to... I, I, well, any time I read a review in a magazine, any time I read a review online, they're always pretty terrible. It's like they're getting 4 out of 10, you know, 3 out of 10, 0, like 1, it's ridiculous. And some of them, you know, there are the odd odd <coughs> one that gets much more than that, and, and are good games, but, I mean, I can't... Off the top of my head, I can I couldn't reel off one off the top of my head that... Is linked to a direct movie. I'm sure all of you can, but I'm saying, I, I, that's what I mean, it's like, it just, I don't know, there, there's something about it. The thing about the Batman games is, as I said, as I said they're not linked to an individual movie. Like, there was a, an old Batman movie, a Batman game, called the Batman movie game, or Batman the movie. Batman the movie. The Batman movie game. What the fuck <laughs> is wrong with me? <laughs> <sighs> yeah, um, and that, that was on a, um, well, I played it on the Commodore 64. Um, and I loved it. It was quite addictive, but it was solid. Um, but yeah, was it the best Batman game? I don't think on the. 8 oh no, no, either. the one we're watching now is actually the best Batman game. No, I'm, uh, on the eight bits, I'm talking about. There, there was quite a few. There was an isometric one. There was a uh, Batman, um, which was based on the comic, where every time you moved like through a doorway, it draw another scene. Um, so there's right. been quite a few Batman games. There's been the, um, lots and lots, in fact. The Nez Batman. Game about the Tim Burton movie one. That's quite well regarded as well. It's probably similar to the Commodore 64 one if it came out around the same time. The yeah, it's the Tim Burton movie one I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah, um, it was a platform yeah, yeah. with like bits in it where you there's one bit where you drove the car and one bit where you flew the bat cop back copter. It's not back copter. Uh, that was on the Mega Drive version. Fun, that <laughs> fun fact about that um, that game. Uh, the one I played on the Commodore 64 anyway, if you played through the first level, which I could do no problem without dying too much because all old games were almost impossible to complete, uh, you got to the second level. At one point, I died. Uh, sorry, I couldn't get past the second level. And, and then at one point, I thought, right, I'm going to see if I can reload the second level. And I did. I, tr I went back to where the tape counter was at the beginning of the second level, reloaded it, and then I got infinite lives. <laughs> and I, I, that's the only cheat I've ever found out on my own without any kind of input from a, a magazine. It's brilliant. 
Um, but I still couldn't get past the second level. <laughs> I still, even with Infinite Lies, I was like, oh, God, I think the computer crashed before I actually got anywhere with it. Well, this is a beer on the bush. I mean, those games were rock hard. I mean, all games. Mm. Uh, I, I fire up a Spectrum occasionally, or a Spectrum emulator, and I get blown away by how ridiculously hard the games are. They're just so punishing and unforgiving. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, most most of my old... I've, I, if, again, another fun fact. I say not actually a fun fact. Related to me directly. My dad came around yesterday, popped around, and he brought my old Commodore 64... And, uh, Get it's, in! It's down there. I've got the the old tape drivers. The old, is it the uh, um? Is it the the brown keyed one or is it the? On. Is it the sharp one or the curly one? No, yeah. The curly one. Curly. Curly. <laughs> there's a few in. The sharp uh, it's, one. Yeah, it's the yeah. It's the Amiga style one. Yeah. That I've was all, the... I've, well, I've got another two, and I think there's one. He said that there's one that works that he definitely knew. Well, used to work, and it's got brown keys. So I've that'll got, be the I've older one. Yeah. yeah. But I've also got a Vic Twenty under there. Sweet. Um, I've got the. This, I, I think I. I talked about the seat there tip oh my god the disc drive a while back if i show you i'm sorry about the mess over here but this is where i dump all my crap you can kind of if i point at it it's uh, uh there we go there that's the disc drive i know it doesn't look very big from here but it's huge. it does actually it looks massive it looks it's massive, massive. It's, it's underneath everything so i don't want to pull it out but um that's what she said <clears throat> <laughs> well uh so okay, while while we're on the subject of really terrible movie tie-ins, I just want to get this one out of the way yeah. to start with, which is uh, E.T. for the oh, Atari yeah. 2600. Yes. Which was so bad that they actually had to bury it in the desert somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was. So, um, <laughs> when you watch footage of this game, it is like it's mind-boggling how <laughs> they could it could be so much money put into it and so much such a big deal, and it'd be so unplayable it, it's not even play i don't think you can even complete it can you is it is it seems like it's fundamentally broken as a, as a game i haven't <laughs> played it so i don't know okay stupid no, face what, what not many people have what time? Uh, 2600 i've got a an this, is, this is released when we were born chris in 1982 i've got i've got an atari 800 xl here oh with the green background i've also got um, a two, 2600 down there as well I'm, yeah. not, I'm not bringing these out for any reason apart from that. i just got them off my dad yesterday look at the, what's, what's going on in that he, why is he just levitating i don't even know what's going <laughs> yeah. on oh you can and actually extend extending his, his neck, neck. <laughs> oh he's, 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 he's just got bummed what's that uh, what's, what's the number doing we don't know. Uh, i think you can only take so many steps and then if you run out yeah uh, you, you you've, home. you've got to uh, get through it all and get back to the Landing site before your people turn <laughs> off that. Yeah. But, <laughs> so, so extending your neck makes you fly, <laughs> apparently. But it's but hard yeah, to it's... tell what's even going on. Like, <laughs> there's just some <laughs> strange loads of flashes coming at you. <laughs> Why does it keep falling down the hole? The collision detection's brilliant. It, I don't, know, what, don't, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, Remember that hole. in the film when ET kept falling down holes <laughs> and then extended his neck and <laughs> How got the... a flower and then flew out. By extending his neck. Can I, just, can, I just, can I just quote Wikipedia here? E.T. is commonly cited as a catalyst for the crash of the video game industry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's so bad that they bury it in a desert and it caused the end of Atari, basically. Oh, yeah. God, that's hideous. I, I, I haven't played that, so... No, no one has. That's why they buried it in the fucking desert, mate. Yeah, but that yeah. One, they weren't the only copies. I'm sure someone has a copy of it, apart you from know, those ones. I think there's like three for, and a half million so copies. And yeah, they had to bury most of them. But yeah, yeah, I think they dug it up recently. I think people have been playing it. I think there are, you can get hold of it still. Uh-huh. But yeah, it's, That's it's, enough of that malarkey. Yeah. yeah, get rid of it. It does look we absolutely It's gone. A tie in one without mentioning the infamous ET. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think, I think uh, uh, certainly in the 80s, a lot of these movie and uh, tie ins were terrible. So I can understand where you're coming from, Chris, but. Um, I, I think... Give me some more examples of good ones, then. I mean, I said... Does it have to be direct story tie-ins, or you just want anything that's linked to the franchise? No, I think direct story tie-ins, because as I said, uh, I'm not saying we have to limit that sh- this show to it, but as okay. I said, that Batman okay. game is a great example of a game that's based on something that was a movie, but it was a comic first, wasn't it? So it's not really based on anything. It's just based on the world that Arkane Studios or whoever did it, Rocksteady. What about uh, June? Um, June, not played June, the game. June, June's the, the, one of the first RTS games, isn't it? Yeah. Com- commonly cited as one of the first, if not the first, um, uh, RTS game. 
RTS and it's uh, it it remains very true to the story uh, from the move <gasps> well from the book and from the extended TV series. Um, is this the is this on the Amiga? This is the PC version, I think. Oh, it this, was released this on spells. This was released on a few. Um, it, it was released on the Amiga, definitely, because uh, that's where I played it on. Um, there's, a, there's a web version actually as well. Um, you can play it on online. Yeah, but it's kind of like it's um, you've got a move in a direction to change rooms and then there was also RTS elements when you actually came to the combat and trying to collect the spice and wherever you. Right. But uh, I really enjoyed that. I was actually hooked on that game for quite a while on the Amiga. So was that you basically walk around a place and that you, so it's not an RTS. You don't look no, down it does on have, it. No, it there does is RTS elements. RTS, but yeah, yeah. Um, when this when the, uh, the video moves on you should see some of it actually. Uh, pretty, pretty good, aren't they? They aren't bad actually for the time. Yeah. Um, what year was this then? What year would this have been out? Uh, 90, early 90s? Yeah. 92? Like, it reminds me very much of, the, the graphic style reminds me very much of um, uh, Indiana Jones and the yeah the Atlantis one, some of Atlantis. I, rem- I remember City the one of Atlantis. Well, yeah, it's a, like, like an RPG cross with an RTS because it was one of the games as well where when you spoke to someone you got choices of what your reply would be. Right. I, th- so you- I think I think that Dune Two was more specifically the RTS one. Just looking at some screenshots now, this, it's this Dune Two. This looks like an adventure game to me. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't played either, to be honest. Um, but look at the lip sync. <laughs> yeah, very well regarded. That's good lip sync. Con- considering we've just been watching Metal Gear Solid, and that was. <laughs> That's pretty good, I think. I, I, I wasn't saying it was bad. I was saying look at it. Yeah, I was looking at it, and I was observing <laughs> it was better than Metal Gear Solid. It looks game interesting, did. though. It's, it's one of the, I think it's one of those games I probably wouldn't play. Oh, this actually just, just reminded me of the other game. Sorry, I got all excited and hit my mic then. Um, <laughs> uh, the other game I've been playing, um, I played that Shadowgate game um, that I said I downloaded, which was the NES remake, and it's pretty much the same kind of game, but it's different puzzles, which is good. Um very difficult, but I did put it on like uber difficulty, like I always do, and I have no idea what to do. I've got a skull, a scepter, and uh, uh, some kind of rag, and I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do with it. <laughs> uh, I know what you do with rags. Mm. Put the skull on the scepter, and then wrap the rag around it and set it on fire. All right, try that. That's skull that's... on fire, Doc. Okay. I don't think yeah. there is a rag in there. I might have just made that up, but um, yeah. <laughs> It's it I, again. I'll, I'll, I might try it again, and I'll start maybe on on a normal setting. Because, yeah. <laughs> um, another game. Well, another series that was made into lots of games, and some actually quite good games uh, early on, <coughs> uh, is the the Middle Earth, uh, um, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, sort of world. Are you now, talking the, about the text adventure. The the Hobbit text adventure. Yeah, was it was ridiculously hard, but it was a very good text adventure. I played that on the BBC, I think, The Hobbit, and I remember, yeah. um, I remember you had to get a rope from somewhere. You got to a cliff and you had to climb down a cliff, but I think I fell down the cliff and died every time because I didn't do things right or I didn't write. Did you oh, tie the rope to the, to the other end. <laughs> yeah, tie rope You're to Hobbit. You jumped down with a rope in your hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I used to love those old adventure games. Though. I said that. Um, uh, that Jack the Ripper I was talking about, that was the same kind of thing. And it's like, I, I was watching it the other day on YouTube and it's totally ridiculous. It's, it's just reams and reams and reams of text. There's no visuals at all on it. And uh, yeah, it's like a novel, but not good. So we're yeah. talking about the whole Tolkien universe here then. Of well, games. yeah, I mean, there's games. some really it's, bad ones as well. There are some really bad ones. And this is the thing that's that's crazy because there seems to be, we're almost unearthing something that seems to be common in the tie-in sort of scene, which is there's games which are done because the developers love the the world. And there's games which are done because it's currently popular and it can make money. Yes, and they and often those kind of games are also farmed out to studios that either don't have a lot of experience or they are they only do that kind of game and yeah. they generally just churn out crap. And again, yeah. this is why I don't tend to buy into it. And as soon as I see it, even if it's a preview, I'm like, I'm not going to pay any attention. Yeah, and I know I kind of know the feeling because it's like when you know when movies come out. I remember when um, Harry Potter 
used to come out the movies and every year they'd be advertising some crappy game where they never show you any gameplay just some cg intro to the game oh the new harry potter movie yeah uh, game's out they were and exceptionally thinking, bland those games well i never even played them i never even saw them in i never even saw the gameplay because they didn't put them in the adverts yeah that was the way for a lot of the time as well they'd show you the fmv or show you some scenes from the movie but never actually show you any oh, of the did, didn't they actually get into trouble in the end from uh, doing that with um, call of duty when they had to actually say this is not in game <coughs> that's yeah and, uh, after that they had to uh, put that little slogan at the bottom all yeah, not, not actual, actual game gameplay footage. Well, Serving every, suggestion. Every <laughs> Assassin's Creed trailer is not gameplay. Like, yeah. it never has. It's always like super lush FMV that's not from the game. I hate that. Why? Why do that? Why? Why make a game and then advertise it with something that isn't the game? That just shows that you're not you're not that happy with the game. Mm. If you were happy enough with the game, you'd show the game off, and that would be enough to make people buy it. Crazy. Yeah. Advertising, man. It's a whole. It's, whole it's probably the marketing game. department just not talking to the production department. Yeah, yeah, we get a lot of that though between departments in any company. So it's, uh, yeah, this I don't know. I th- I, I, there's something about that. It's it's soulless and it doesn't cater to real gamers. I think it ah. caters to it caters to casual gamers. And I'm not saying casual gamers are a bad thing because we've got some good games out of casual gaming. And I'm not I'm not going to go into that because that's not what this show's about. But it it it's. I don't know. Yes, it's just making it's just making money, and I'm 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 not into that. I'm not. I don't even want to get around surround that. You know, look at yeah. the Alien versus Predator games. Look at the re- most recent one. Now, I uh, thought on that your was brains. Uh, no, no, Alien versus Predator specifically. All right, sorry. Um, the the first original Alien versus Predator. I actually bought it uh, a couple of years back again because um, I lost my copy and I wanted to get it. So I got a gold version of it. I got a disc, it came, I installed it, and I was like, oh, this is going to be brilliant nostalgia, and it was absolutely terrible. And then I played the most recent one again, and it's worse. I mean, it looks beautiful, <laughs> it's got really nice graphics, but that's the limit. You the, know? the the Aliens universe and the Predator universe have been two universes that have been absolutely impossible to translate to the game, sort of to get, make them into games basically and it's bizarre because you think it should work it should work there's a new alien game coming out soon um, which Isolation. is basically yeah it's you're basically Ripley's daughter stuck on a ship with an alien and it's a retelling basically of the original alien movie that's Sounds more of like great. a psychological thriller isn't it yeah that it's one? a horror it's game, action it, game. It's, yeah. a hor- it's a horror game um, but they just, for some reason up until now what seems like it should be a franchise that lends itself perfectly to gaming just hasn't happened, it hasn't well, transpired. The, the game we're watching now, the original, um, I actually quite liked... When we first played it, I remember us playing it at a LAN party. It was well. a LAN, yeah. Uh, playing multiplayer it was a bit, a bit mental and it was really cool, but I think the problem with me going back to it and trying it again is that the graphics didn't hold up. The gameplay... I don't know. It wasn't as precise as it maybe you know could have been, but I still think it was a good effort. This the early one, but the new one really did not sit with me at all. I mean, I played through all three types. I never liked the, the marine in any of the in any of the games because <laughs> it was just terrifying. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, I loved I loved the predator. I, sorry, I loved the alien. Loved the fact that you could jump around. I didn't like the predator in the newest one at all. I, I felt like it was. It was all about the gadgets and not much else. The gadgets didn't feel like they connected either. It just the amount of gadgets was what what was. Do you have the the disc? You yeah. have yeah you have uh, the, pretty much the same as you used to have. But that, I, I, one thing I found as well is that the ammo was really really limited and sparse, and uh, it didn't feel fun. And and there was a lot of pred aliens and like um, uh, lots of hybrids and new right. types of aliens that weren't in the other game that I didn't didn't really like. So why is it that it's so bad that we think it's because the right developer hasn't been chosen or is it just that it's not it's just a concept that won't work as a game? I, I have a funny feeling that, that Fox are being obstructive about it and they're not allowing them uh, Fox Fox uh, have um have been well known to be bad at uh nurturing these franchises. They 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 got really involved with Alien Three to the point where um the director basically oh. disowned it. Yeah. Um, I think that it, Fox are being overly demanding and overly interfering with these games to the point where they're, they're not being as good as it could be. 
It could I be think that. overly overly protective of their franchise and they're, they're smothering it basically. Well, I think that's what's going on. Look at the uh, look at the content ID stuff that's going on in YouTube that we we are victim of as well at the moment. The main problem with that is that when the content ID uh, requests and that they're they're declined, it's usually it's not game companies that are declining them. Game companies want people to to put videos on YouTube game companies want people to to expose their game and show unique playthroughs and interesting commentary and stuff the movie companies that might have the the IP the intellectual property for the particular franchise or whatever they're the ones that are, are saying no to it and they're the ones that are, are causing the you know the, the issues or whatever you want to call it because they think well it's our it's our property doesn't matter if it's um uh, what's it called fair use it, it's our property, you know. It doesn't matter. You're playing through it, but yeah, it's a whole again a whole it's different a, subject. It, yeah, it is. It's, it's a weird one. Fuck you, Fox. Yeah, <laughs> I th I think that's the case. I mean, I might be wrong, but it it seems so many people have had a crack at it now, and no one's got it right. The probably the best one is what I think you probably put on the list, which is uh, Alien trilogy, which is made by the same people who did Die Hard trilogy, which is also a Fox franchise. Yeah, uh, both of those both games. Both great are games. Great, yeah. Yeah, they were great games. I mean, I think Die Hard Trilogy was better, but um, Alien How Trilogy certainly captured the atmosphere and the weapons. I forgot. I forgot Die Hard Trilogy. I, I was going to say, how we list. not put Die Hard Trilogy on the list? I can't believe I forgot Die Hard Trilogy, and I've remembered Alien Trilogy. Yeah, uh, sorry. I that can't game was so ever good. Man. A Die Hard, Die Hard game. Trilogy was an excellent. Game. It was three it. games basically. Yeah. The first, it was the, the original Die Hard. It was a top down. You were going to, like walking through Nakatomi Plaza. And you yeah. had to go up all the floors. The second game was um, uh, an unreal shooter, um, where you were like you were getting dragged around the airports and you had to shoot people and stuff. And the third game was a driving game for um, Die Hard with a Vengeance. Yeah. And all yeah. three of them are really nicely accomplished games. Really, it's some really, yeah. really yeah. genuinely, like entertainingly bad impressions of Bruce Willis <laughs> and yeah. Samuel L. Jackson and Yippee whatever. Yippee ki yay, motherfucker! Yeah, I, this I, isn't I, even my jurisdiction. I may have, I may have played one or two of them. I just don't remember if I have. PlayStation only, I believe, but they are. They are yeah. probably not then. Good games. Yeah. Um, it's cracking. Yeah, I was a late comer to the place, the world of PlayStation. And Alien Trilogy was like a first-person shooter on the PlayStation One that actually kind of worked and was pretty damn scary as well. Actually, it was, it was yeah. atmospheric. The motion yeah, sensors really used to always creepy. freak me out. Yeah. Mm. Well, then again, the same the same applied for the Alien vs. Predator when you played on all as the a, Alien games. Uh, when you played as a Marine, <laughs> oh. Yeah. You see, it makes you wonder what. Why has no one done a better job of this? Why was Alien Colonial Marines so rubbish? I know I haven't played that. I've not seen any I gameplay, haven't. but I've just been it, told just by everyone it's opposite. awful. I've, I've got a feeling it's, it's it's like exactly what you said before, Lou. Because wasn't that made by Gearbox, the guys who did uh, Borderlands? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. So you got so you got a studio who's who can make you know a reputedly great first person shooter series, gets given a franchise that everybody already loves, and makes a stinker. Something <laughs> went wrong somewhere, didn't it? Something yeah. went bad. Some someone stepped in and made that game bad, didn't they? Yeah, I hate so to I be the, to... the kind of conspiracy theorist, but I think that's what it is. Mm. Um, I can't comment. I can't really say that's the case because it would be. I think it would be stupid for for a film company to do that. But to, they to, do, though. They uh, go. You have to. These are the things that you have to do in this game. These are the things that this franchise has to have. You have to do this. Hit this mark. You have to do this, that, and the other. That's what they do. That's that's how they formulate. They churn out games and films that all end up being. A homogenous lump of nothingness. Wasn't because that's what they do. Wasn't Colonial Marine? I mean, they were touting that they, when they were doing a development for Col Colonial Mari Marines, that they were speaking closely and they were all real big fans of of the game. And they were they were they had Fox in house and they were talking to them about things and getting things right. And well, I, I, I don't think Fox, they... I, I don't think Fox know what it is that, that is that made the series good. It's like what I said before. I, you know, not everyone who makes something awesome knows why it was awesome. Mm. <coughs> George <don't> Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, yeah well, let's, why, why don't we talk, while we're talking about George Lucas, why don't we talk about the Star Wars game? Because there's a series that's had its ups and downs. I mean, it's, I remember Star Wars on the arcade. That was a brilliant game. It's had a lot yeah. of ups and a lot of downs. Like, it's had hundreds of games, surely. Uh, it's it's yeah. a big... It's almost like a, a media giant in its own right, the Star Wars, because it's there's so many Star Wars games that it's almost like a, a gaming series to rival all the big ones, you know? Is I that because of the copyright oversight, though, in the beginning? Because you what, sir? 
George Lucas didn't uh, return any of the uh, merchandise and rights for the IP, did he? Which means that basically a lot of companies had free rent to do what they no, wanted. No, this isn't around. George Lucas was the first one to actually say he wanted exclusive um, rights to the merchandising, and that's how he made all the money. I thought that's why everyone and anyone's dog can rip off Star Wars, like without any type of comeback. Like, so, you know, what? the Simpsons, Family Guy, they've all ripped off Star Wars. I thought that was because it was pretty much. No, because um, no, because it's 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 fair use again. If they're commentating yeah. or criticizing it, then it's fair use. Yeah, and a lot of people Remember, raise raise clash action lawsuits against these people, but they just laugh it off. You know, they've got good lawyers. And Family Guy did do their their tribute with the full support of LucasArts, I think, as well. Probably, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, I think they had their one. Board. Star Wars as a movie is one of the first movies to actually really capitalise on the front, the um, the 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 marketing and the um, the the, the tie-in stuff, the uh, merchandising. Sorry, but yeah, this I remember playing this game, and this this is something that I wanted to say a little earlier. This appeals to another type of audience, and that's the audience that loved the movie. I loved the the the, the piece of fiction and wanted to be in that world mm. while not necessarily being a gamer. You don't need really need to be that good at games to to really enjoy this. And although this bit that's on the video now is just like a bit generic and gamey, there's the uh, trench, the trench yeah. battle, <clears throat> which well, is every, brilliant. Still, everybody wants was, to be in that. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. 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 It was massively impressive cool, for its though. time, though. It was. Even I, I mean, now it looks cool. Yeah. It was a it was a close cab as well, wasn't it? I remember you used to get inside it and you saw hmm. the big, uh, big joystick thing, the big, uh, what would you call that? The the trigger. No, it's, I um it's... I was at a, a convention a few months back uh, in Blackpool called Play. Uh, retro oh, I thought you were going to say Star Star Wars convention. He goes no, no. <laughs> it was a it was a retro gaming convention, and they had a, a number of Star Wars. They had this there, but oh, I the oh, only check one, that out. <laughs> the only one that I played, uh, I felt a bit weird playing on the on the arcades. They're all free, you know. You paid an entry free, and then you could just do what you want. I just felt really weird, but um, <laughs> yeah, the. Uh, the one I played was the Return of the Jedi game, and you, you had this you had this paddle thing that you had to move backwards and forwards, but it had been played to death, and it was really really hard to play and control in any like way, shape, or form. It was horrible, um, but I, I you know I played through I played through the first level, died a million times, and gave up. <laughs> but it was all right, you know. It seemed like a decent enough game. I, th I think the thing about Star Wars is it's kind of trans. It's gone past that boundary that Aliens is in, where there's so many people who've got so much fond memories of it, and everyone loves it so much that there are enough people out there who can actually make good products now, based on the franchise. Let me list some of the Star Wars games that I thoroughly enjoyed, um, and these aren't directly related to film, uh, f actual films, as far as I'm aware. The Jedi Academy series. I quite enjoyed that. They weren't the best in the world, but I really enjoyed playing them online. I really enjoyed playing through the single player because it was interesting. The worlds were cool. I thought it was quite well implemented. You, I, I'm not sure if you could go from first to third person. I think when you shot blasters, you were in first person, and then when you were lightsaber and you were in third person. But you followed That's this. Right. You followed this. This. Um, I can't remember his name now, but it was it was this one Jedi who was kind of outcast, and then came back into it, and then I think I think actually I think Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy Two was called Jedi Academy Two Outcast. Um, There's yeah, loads I, of games, yeah. I, I mean, I, I played the Star Wars Galaxy game um, MMO, which was lackluster the, to say the least. It, there was a lot of big big fans of that though, because isn't there like a free shard now? Isn't like a, a basically someone's booted it back up and allows people to play the original Star Wars galaxies? Uh, possibly. I've still got I the think there is. discs behind me. I got I bought the um Jump to Light Space expansion, which meant you could you, you could go through different planets anyway, you could visit different planets, but the jump to light space let you buy a ship and then you know customize your ship and then have space battles and it was it was really cool, but I don't know the upgrade system in that was really badly done, and they changed it just after I stopped playing, and I thought I'm not going back to it now. You know, I've, I've had enough. It, it was by the guys who just done EverQuest. And there was also um, the the holocron stuff. You had to search the entire world for these pieces of holocrons or, or a number of holocrons or something which are little cube things and when you got the right ones then you had to do like hours and hours and hours of questing before you could become a Jedi and there was like one or two Jedis on the server and they they couldn't ever get the lightsaber out and tell people that they were Jedis because everybody would just destroy them 
and and it was permadeath. <laughs> Once you died as a Jedi, you, that was it. It reset. So you, you basically go off and start questing with your lightsaber on your own in a remote part of the galaxy and not ever see anyone. So you'd hardly ever see a Jedi, apart from the NPCs, of course. But all Kudos. of the Kudos to them for having the balls to do that, though, to, to actually put something in the game which is really hard to attain and then really hard to keep hold of. Mm, extremely hard. Uh, in my, I mean, I never got anywhere. And I didn't even get one holocron, I don't think. But, it's uh, yeah, it's <coughs> it was interesting for the few uh, months that I played it, but I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend it to. I wouldn't have recommended mm. it to anyone. I, I think that the, the the point is that we could probably sit through an entire episode, uh, listen off all the great games that have come from the Star Wars trilogy, and like all the terrible um, ones, Wing Commander and um, Knights of the Old Republic, and you there know, there's command, loads um, of them. Republic Commandos, and then the Star yeah. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. <coughs> they they were yeah. brilliant games in my eyes. Um, Force Unleashed. That's a good series. The, um, yeah, it's not. It's not, it. it's not well received. <laughs> I liked it because it was a really good implementation of the lightsaber. I thought um, the first one was much better than any of the others. I think there's only two actually, wasn't there? Yeah. Um, yeah, the first one was re uh, quite cool. I thought. But was yeah. It, uh, was it Rogue Squadron or one of the ones on the GameCube was supposed to be really good? It actually like the Star Wars franchise lends itself. So lots of different genres because we've already talked about RPGs, MMOs. You've got uh, space fighters. You know, you've got your lightsaber, you know, swashbuckling. You've also got shooters. It's like it, you can sort of do anything with it. That's kind of brilliant. That's kind of one of the things why it's endeared for so long, just as a franchise in general, as the thing. You know, are those Star all Wars Star Wars is, games? They're all the boxed Star Wars games that I've got. Uh, <laughs> Jedi yeah. Knight, Jedi Academy. Uh, Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcasts. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, Lego Star Wars, which is actually really, really good. A lot of the Star Wars games are good, though. In fact, we haven't. That, that's the the Lego franchise. I think. Is I was going to talk about. about them. I was going to um, talk. Every one I've played has been good, though. So, Star Wars Galaxies Empire Divided. What's that? Being some kind of uh, Adam oh, expansion. I think that's the first one. That's the the actual game. All right. Okay. Um, and then. That was the one I was talking about, Republic Commando. I, I played maybe the first couple of levels of that, and then I just got bored. It was just really, really, really repetitive. Just Facts. remember, there's also Dark Forces, wasn't there, on the Doom engine? It's another old Star Wars game that people hold in high regard. I've got two, the two Old Republics. Jump to light speed expansion, and then the two Battlefronts that I have. And uh, both, both are brilliant games. Battlefront 2 is a particularly good one. Uh, Are they working on a third one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dice, Dice who did the um the Battlefield three and four. They're working Ooh, on it. Okay, cool. I've also got my gold alien versus predator down here. <laughs> right. Rogue Squadron was fun though for the GameCube. I, I don't think I played that. I There's lots well. and lots. I think I've got that downstairs though. Oh, uh, Star Wars has got a lot of. Yeah. yeah, we could we, li we could literally talk about it all night, and I think maybe <laughs> yeah. we should stop. Maybe we should move on to the next one. So, anyone else got any? Um, I uh, want to bring one up. Go unless on. he wants to go first. No, go for it, Sam. Um, I mean, just try and find it so I can highlight it. No, just just uh, talk about it, and I'll find it. Uh, it's Spider-Man Two, um, the uh, tie into the movie game. Uh, now, I think the footage is important because what this game did right is the one thing that matters about doing Spider-Man properly, and that is they did web-swinging around New York well, and I mean really well, as in I've played a couple of games since then, Spider-Man games, and none of them have got it. I mean, yeah, it's obviously really dated by now. Whenever you stop and go down to street level, the, you know it really looks quite clunky, but every piece of web that you shoot hits a part of the, the a, a, a building, and you rotate around that point, and it's 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 a you know it's a downsized version of Manhattan, but it's a, I mean look at that man, so much fun it does, to do this stuff. I remember you playing this. I remember walking into your room while you were playing it once, and it looked fun, but it's one of those that is the more to it than just swinging around, you know. For me, yeah. there is. I mean, the combat's quite just normal, punchy, punchy, jumpy, jumpy, punchy, punchy. But was, the thing is. So much fun! It tied together so well, and it had a bit of a lighter tone in the film as well. <laughs> so it, had, it, it injected a little bit of the comic booky kind of stuff with the shocker. And Spidey was more taking the mick out of the bad guys more than he does in the films, which I really liked. It had a lot of really cool stuff in it. 
Was this tied to a specific film? Sorry, two people at once then. Sorry, go on, Chris. Um, was this tied to a specific film or was it just Yeah, it was Spider Man 2. You, you played through the plot of Spider Man 2, but it obviously had a lot of extra stuff. It had, you know, you had the Doctor Octopus and all that kind of stuff, but uh, it had the Shocker and Black Cat and, all, you know, lots of little side stories and things that you could do in it. This has reminded me of old Spider Man games. I, I played like 2D ones where you'd jump against the. There was one on the arcade specifically. It might have been an X Men game, possibly, like a X Men versus Capcom or something. I don't know. Spider Man isn't in either of them. <laughs> no, you're right. It was somewhat <laughs> like that, and there was a lot of different, a lot of different things. But anyway, I remember it being quite fun, and I can't remember what it was now. It's annoying. Look, looking at that game, it reminds me a lot of Crackdown. Mm. Yeah, this is before Crackdown. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. obviously well, before well Crackdown. Before, yeah. yeah, I like Crackdown though. It's, it's a good game. Well, it's the I same got, sort of thing. Like jumping around the city. Yeah, I got bored of it as well, but it was cool for a while jumping around the city and. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know what else to say about it other than it's just a genuinely really good fun web swinging around New York in this game and they never ever got did it better than this in terms of the way it feels. Yeah. I bet it's hard to do though. I mean, the physics <sighs> involved in that would be quite interesting. I think, you know, getting you around corners and making sure you don't swing, you know, swing into the wrong things. And it take, I mean, it takes skill to do it as a player as well. You can just keep swinging into the buildings and looking like an idiot. But when you get into the how to use the both analog sticks properly and when to time your web shoots you know you could get really good flows and constant movement going it was really good fun Ooh, here's one that i uh i i actually did play and i quite enjoyed but i don't I, one of you's put it in um aladdin for the mega drive yeah um i, I, I quite liked it but again i've got probably nostalgic memories of it rather than i'm going to watch it now and probably criticize it <laughs> I despise all the Disney tie-ins. They were all the same. They were all bloody crappy platformers. Mm. Every single one. I So you say that, but there's one that's in the list um, below, which is, Disney, uh, which is a Disney tie-in, uh, which is the Lion King game. Yeah. Oh, and I yeah. actually really enjoyed that. Well, I can't it, remember it. That's the one I enjoyed. I remember getting it for the SNES. It is. Uh, they were both a bit, uh, Sorry, they were both available on SNES and Mega Drive. Um, Slightly different versions. The, the SNES has slightly different colours, and obviously the music was better on the SNES than it was on the Mega Drive, and that kind of stuff. Oh, don't but say I mean, better. Say different. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Some I people quite that, like that sound. I would. Well, whatever. <laughs> the, the, the Nintendo was more advanced system it, than the Mega Drive. There's no getting away from it. It's like an early Donkey Kong Country, though. This isn't it. I remember. Yeah, the the ledge you know grabs the and stuff were pretty cool. I know, but it's like the levels kind of changed, and as you as as you went through the story and you grew into a lion from a cub, then you kind of at the enemies stayed the same scale. So what was quite big when you were a cub, you actually went back to when you could just like destroy with a raw. Yeah, yeah, yeah but and it was like, and, it yeah. Was, it was, <laughs> and you, actually you grew up, didn't you, through the yeah, game? Yeah. Did you just say that? He just I said did. that. Sorry, I wasn't listening. To you. I was watching Simba. <laughs> <laughs> But like the special stages, kind of like they're tied into uh, like the canyon stampede bit and whatever. It was yeah, it was fun. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but then I remember the uh, the magic carpet bit um, from the Cave of Wonders in Aladdin game with that with the lava's chasing you. That being really cool. So, so they were platform. like they were platformers, but they did. I would say Aladdin and the Lion King are the two that I played and really enjoyed. Yeah, and I think that they were they were a good go at that thing, and they looked like the film as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, never I, been a fan of them. I'm afraid. No, I mean I'm not. I mean now, these days I wouldn't choose to play them. I don't think. But back then we were a lot more limited to the games that we had. I think. And, yes. Um, and this this kind of game was quite good at the time. I wouldn't say it was revolutionary, but it was it was interesting to play as a as a kid. I think. And there was, and there was a lot, lot of longevity as well. Yeah. Yeah. Not much and replayability well, like, but just well put together though. Just nice, look nice, pl- it sort of played quite nice. You know. Yeah. Good. Uh, one that I do want to bring up, um, uh, because I, I, see, I we were talking about this before the, the stream started, and I think I'm the only one who's played it, but it's Tron 2.0, um, which was released, I think, on the PC and possibly other platforms as well. It was basically made as, a, as an official sequel to the Tron movie. Um, it was a first-person shooter. Um, it was done on the same engine as... Um, uh, it was done by the same people who did what's the name of that 
spy game where you play as a woman? Metroid. No, uh, spy um, game. Perfect spy. Dark. Sorry, I let you. Perfect Dark. No, no, no. It was uh, it's, it's set in the sixties. It's oh, like a, uh, uh, it, it, Well, anyway, it's on. it's <laughs> anyway, yeah. It's a really really good game. Um, really accomplished first person shooter. The visuals are great in it. This was two thousand and two, I believe. Um, 2002-2003 so although it looks a little bit dated I still think it stands quite well for a game that old it looks alright, I don't know how good it was for playing it was, a good, it was a good game to play it, was, it suffered a little bit from the fact that the, really the only weapon worth using was the disc launch, the disc Tron disc thing but yeah. it, was, it was an excellent game, I played it all the way through um, and it was just nice but it's a shame that not many people got to play it really, did I think it, a lot of people were put off by the name, did Tron it, did it have... Um... Uh, light bikes in it. Yes, it did have light cycles in it. I think at some light point. Light cycles. Yeah. That's but it was yeah, it? great game. It um and and <clears> just really <throat> polished and well done. It and reminds me right of of a game that uh, I've been following on Twitter, uh, an indie game called Black Ice. Um, and it's uh, it's done by, uh, said another indie developer on his own, and he he released it a few months ago, and it's kind of like this. You're supposed to just go up to buildings and you hack into the building and then when you hack, this kind of bubble forms around you and then you uh, you use different skills and stuff. It's like an RPG as well and you upgrade yourself as you go along. And it's uh, it's it's got the same look to it. It's not the same gameplay in by any stretch of the imagination, but it's, uh, it's quite nice. I like that. But then again, that's set inside a cyber world as well, you know, like a... Yeah. No one world. lives forever is a game I was trying to think of. No one lives there's the two operative. of them there's, yeah and they're both that. excellent games really really good looking games uh, and good fun to play as well but yeah Monolith so did it fair enough so yeah I mean now I think that was interesting because that's a game made about a movie which is made about games so a bit of meta going on there yeah yeah. and it yeah, was yeah. actually a good game well there's a few. There's a few. Um, oh, Myth, uh, Mythalore in the chat's just put a link into Black Ice actually, and I might. Uh, oh no, it's a Steam link, so I can't show it. But yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's quite interesting. I I quite like it. I got the demo before they released it. I haven't bought it yet, uh, but it, it did. It was an interesting concept. Again, for one guy who did it, the the graphics are fairly basic, but he's doing more and more and more to it as he as he can, and he's doing looks, pretty well out of it as well. It looks very Tron. Yeah, that's what I mean. It just reminds me of that, you know. But I think right. I don't know. I think the I don't know how much uh, how much playability is in it from what I could see. But it was a beta again when I played it. So yeah, let's talk about uh, an utterly terrible movie that had been made from a game. Now I don't know if you've um... oh, there's so many to choose yeah. from, man. Well, so many to choose from. Now the the the. The one I'm going to talk about is Street Fighter. <laughs> now, just think about that film makes me laugh. Just, just going to ask you guys the links that are in the in the document. Are they film or are they game? Um, they're all the ones film. That are, they're both. That's those are the two direct bits. The so hard bit is the speech that he gives about going up the river and. Right, I I can't remember it because I watched it once and then uh, discarded it from my memory. So. <laughs> same here. Um, I remember the Callum was in it and uh, and it wasn't Guile played by uh, Van Damme. Jean Claude Van Damme, yep. yeah. So, so Guile, the All American hero, is Belgian. Chun Li yes. was in it as well. Um, I can't remember who played Chun Li. Some random woman. There is and actually like M Bison. Who was M Bison? Because that was a fa fairly famous person, wasn't it? Um, it was the guy who played Gomez Adams. It was oh, uh, called Ra oh. uh, Raoul Julia. I think he's got name. massive eyes. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Good actor, man. Saying, really good actor. He's the only one in the film who really did good business with the film. You know, like he actually uh, tried. I think. There's, um, there's a Jackie Chan movie, I think it's Police Story 2, but I'm, I can't be certain about it, but it's got a scene in it where Jackie Chan basically turns into all the Street fight, Fighter characters, <laughs> which is better. That little scene is better than the entire Street Fighter movie that was made. Um, I suggest you go and look for that on YouTube or something, because that's brilliant. Um, I'm going to put, I'm going to put the, the, the movie clip on for Street Fighter. Oh, don't, but don't. I'm not, I'm not going to put it live, because, again, <laughs> content ID stuff, but I just want to see... The quality, etc. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry, people who are watching, but <laughs> I can't remember if it's, quality. if it's decent quality. It doesn't look it's great. Terrible. 
we will put links to these things in uh, the description, <laughs> but unfortunately we can't show them on the stream because we've already had enough trouble showing game footage. Yeah. And well, showing movie footage will basically people will turn up and stab us in the face. Why have they got blue camouflage? Well, we're Urban. looking at the bit where he's talking to the AN soldiers who are like the UN but not the UN, and he's basically like, "We have been told the war is over. We can all go home." Don't do but any... I'm not going home. I'm going up that river. And he does all that bit. <laughs> Don't do an impression of him. We'll get a Colin ID match. <laughs> That's a great impression. That's that the was best awesome. Fun it's the bit where he's like, he's like, um, what does he say? He goes, uh, I'm going to kick that son of a bitch bison's ass <laughs> so hard that the next bison wannabe is going to feel it. <laughs> it's amazing. Have you been practicing that? Sam, we need oh, you just to just do the, like, We need an audiobook version of the movie done by you. <laughs> Sam, Sam that's, brilliant. The that's the only reason that I like Sam is because he can do uh, <laughs> he can do great impressions of people. Yeah, unfortunately, I said guys, we can't show any of this, so we're going to stop showing it. I'm going to show. So I, yeah, I'm yeah. Sure. the film knows exactly the scene that I'm talking about. <laughs> it's oh, like I it's infamous. That. You've sold um, it to me. It's terrible. I want to jump straight on then to the uh, Super Mario Brothers movie. Yeah. Oh, God. Pain. An another one, <laughs> another one that has uh, it, uh, completely uh, escaped my memory. Bob Hoskins and Jeff McJefferson. Uh, John Leguizamo, isn't it? That's his name. Uh, and it's and, and, uh, it's and it's, it's so eighties and so bad. And the, the soundtrack was done by a rock set, I think. Yeah, it, just, it was just horrible in every possible way. Fucking Cooper. The one I thing I remember was uh, <laughs> oh, God, <it's> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the um. There were bombs in them. Uh, they were like little yeah. wide up things, and they had Reebok trainers on. I remember that because they had the little Union well, Jack on the bottom yeah, of them. Yeah, there was loads of um, there was loads of um, product placement in it, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Loads of this. <laughs> this is this is a case Every... of, of of a movie studio just basically shitting out a film and going, "It's for kids. It'll it doesn't do. matter. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter." Yeah. Oh, yeah. in the um, oh, you call them the uh, the Cooper Troopers with the tiny heads but massive bodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Goomba. <laughs> Which is a really terrible. I always think like another, another, <laughs> another. It's like easy for guys like us who don't have kids to sort of be like our oh, kids are all shit and stupid and that. But the fact that people have such a contemptuous attitude towards them that they think putting this kind of dross in front of them is okay. Yeah, it's quite unpleasant. Like it's an unpleasant mindset to be in. It's like that's not. Like, kids can enjoy good things as well if you give them good things to enjoy. They don't I mean, have to watch shit like. Super this Mario is what, 1993? I was 12 year old when this came out and I laughed at it then. It was so bad that I, it, it, it almost hurt. I can't watch or see Bob Hoskins without thinking about that um, Adam and Joe sketch. The song. <laughs> That's mint. And in, in Anybody fact, who's not seen that, look it up on YouTube. Look up Adam and Joe Bob Hoskins song. Yeah, but and, and, and there's also the, the Robert De Niro song and the football yeah. song. They're all brilliant. If you haven't watched Adam and Joe, those three are the Either, the best moments to me, but there's quite a few good sketches. There's also a yeah. lot of trash as well that they do, unfortunately. Actually, uh, uh, Mythalodus raised a point in the chat there. Was the Super Mario Brothers actually four children? What was the rating? It looks like? quite scary. I mean, um, uh, was it a PG, maybe? It, it's going to have to have been, surely. You couldn't, you couldn't get away with doing it again. A PG-13 or whatever it was in America at the time. Not yeah. for that. It was three. Minus three, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <my Edison. laughs> you, you weren't even a twinkle in your father's eye, and you could watch it. <laughs> you could just go and see him as you know DNA. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's uh, let's try and uh, pluck from the, the the depths of obscurity the uh, good films. Well, there are some. There, um, there, although uh, there are a lot of te terrible um, movies made from games, in the same way there are a lot of terrible games made from movies. There are some pretty good ones. Uh, one that I really like, although it, it does still have the, the slight order of cheese about it, is Doom. I haven't seen yeah. it. Uh, I haven't seen it it's, uh, it is a great movie. Well, no, it's not a great movie. Let, let's, let's make this very clear. It's not a great movie. <laughs> but it's a very had, enjoyable movie. Had I have still lived like around you guys, I probably would have went to see it with you. But uh, I, I, just I don't got... think I went to did I go see? Uh, did I go see at the cinema? Did I go with you, Steve? I think we did, yeah, because you're the yeah. only person that would go with me. 
but yeah. it's got a scene in it, and I don't know. I don't know if you can show this. I, I imagine. I'm not showing any of this. Unfortunately, you're not showing it. Well, yeah, uh, we will put a link. We will put a link to it. Basically, there's a section of the movie which is all done in a first person view. That's um, cool. essentially um, the main character. Uh, I think he gets a berserk. What's the equivalent of the berserk pack? Doesn't he? Because um, it makes he, him super strong. He, yeah, it's the what hell? the berserk pack is supposed to be. He gets injected by some type of genetic enhancement thing yeah but the next the next five to eight minutes or so the movie is entirely done from a first person perspective with the gun walking yeah. through corridors as uh, zombies jumping out at him and stuff like There's that chainsaws in it and, and to be fair they had to do that they did have it's to do it but they did first, it well it's the, it's, they did it well it's the definition of a first person shooter you know doom is the first person shooter the first one pretty uh, much. yeah but it was it's done well yeah, it was done well. It looks, was funny, it okay. and it's and it, it's no, it is. It's just a lot of fun. Um, and if if I was in an American theater, I would have been cheering watching this. Luckily, <laughs> I'm British, and that means I can get to shut the fuck up when I'm watching a movie. But in America, yeah. they would probably go uh, bonkers about this. There's bit. a bit in it, I think, where he uh, he walks around the corner, and there's like a, a zombie <laughs> thing with a chainsaw over his head. And he blows his arms off, and the chainsaw just falls. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, and he's just there flailing with his stumps. Yeah, well, like you do. Yeah, it's, I remember it's, um, this being advertised, but I didn't. I mean, what it was, is. There I'd recommend watching it. In it. Things like that. It, no, I don't. Doesn't the it. rock turn into what's supposed to be the cyber demon? He's, he doesn't. He, he gets some chewing gum on his face. He's like he turns into a, a star Star Trek. Um, alien. Yeah, but he becomes like Star-Trek super strong, Betty. doesn't he? But yeah, yeah, it's 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 tied in. Every element isn't there, but it's it's worth a watch, definitely. Yeah. I'd say. I, th- I think the rock was a bit um, worried about. People doing CG with him after we saw the Scorpion King. Mm. <laughs> I thought, right, bad, all, you do, all you're doing with me is you're sticking some <laughs> chewing in my face, and that's as, that's as far as you're going with it. But yeah, yeah it is. Um, so... it, it's, it's a good movie time. It is, like I say, it's cheesy. Um, well, mm. It's not well acted. It's got some terrible lines in it, but it's fun. Well, and I'm... I've watched it about three or four times. I'm going to say one, and you guys may not agree with me, but the um, the Resident Evil film. Mm. I'm the first say- one it's like passable I guess don't they get steadily worse I mean it's it's, it's um, what's the name it's uh, Mila Jovovich Mila Jovovich, Mila Jovovich yeah. yeah but do you know what I mean the first Resident Evil film was what as it was watchable but for someone like me who really 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 loved those games um, when they first came out they just didn't have any of the personality now I'm not saying that Resident Evil had great depth or characters or anything like that but what it did have was a lot of atmosphere and some very good and really good take on zombies like the the sound of resident evil zombies is very unique like i always thought the way that they did that uh, the really sort of like tired an old sort of sounding voice that they all had i don't even remember what the zombies were like in the film because they just didn't seem to be important it was about like twatty characters who shot stuff and <laughs> sci-fi lasers cutting people up and a really badly CGI'd liquor. Yeah, I, I can see um, Michelle Rodriguez in there being angry woman, like she is in every movie. I had no problem with uh, with, with her or Mila Jovovich in it. I mean, that's Resident Evilish sort of characters, fine. But it just—I don't know, man. It just felt very if it, if trashy. It looks, it looks like I have seen it. I've only seen it once years ago, but it does seem like they could have got it closer to the series without it doesn't, it doesn't harming f- anything. Yeah, it didn't feel anything like uh, the games at all. Mm. There was no creepiness to it, no well, the, Doesn't no the second horror. movie, doesn't, it, doesn't she get on the surface in the second movie and that's more like the style yeah. of... and it's got Nemesis in it as well, but it's still, it, the second movie's worse than the first one. Right, I, I thought it would be. I Do you think the, um, like the, the, the detachment from the game is because obviously the game is Japanese and the movie was made by an American studio? Um, yes and know. no, but they could yeah. still do a Japanese version of it, you know. It's... Yeah, but they wouldn't, would they? Because it's Hollywood. Well, they could, still, Hollywood. Yeah. they could still have played the game and tried to uh, like, emulate the atmosphere. Like Whether you say it was a great film or not, at least the Silent Hill movie, the first one, tried to make it feel like the game. They at least tried to get the atmosphere of it, even if it came off feeling a bit clunky. Hang on. They made an effort. Right. Did I say Silent Hill at the beginning? You said Resident Evil. Right, Resident I actually Evil. met a Silent Hill film. I'd, I've never seen that. I was watching that trailer going, I don't know this <laughs> film at all. Ah, right. <laughs> Good thing we do, isn't it? Good thing we've seen it. Yeah, all right, sorry. I thought you were I, staying quiet during this episode anyway. I actually just told... Well, I, I am kind of. Um, I was talking about the Silent Hill film. That's the one that I thought 
I I've thought just... was quite good. Um, that I had quite well. a lot of atmosphere. That that was um, a little bit more uh, more like the game. But yeah, that Resident Evil one didn't look anything like Resident Evil. It just clicked then that we weren't talking about the same game at all. Uh, <laughs> um, a a Japanese movie Japanese. that feels a lot like the game, um, to a certain extent, I thought, was the uh, Halo Forward into Dawn. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Didn't yes, even know I Halo like had that. a film. Well, it, it wasn't a cinematic release, but it was kind of like a, a, a bonus that was included with Halo 4. Yeah. All right. I, I watched that and I really enjoyed that. I thought that's the closest that anything has c- came to the books, yeah, which they... I know we keep going on about, but the books are very good. Wasn't Halo Forward Unto Dawn actually co-produced with the Machinima, the Machinima channel on um, YouTube? Because uh, I'm sure they released that before yeah, I think Halo you're right, 4 yeah. came out. And yeah, it, was yeah. Yeah. Four epi- it was like four episodes. Um about these, yep. isn't it about like young sort of soldiers on a on a on yeah. a, a ship, the forward unto dawn ship or whatever? No, no, they're uh, they're on uh, they're on the reach, aren't they? And they're training yeah. on reach. Is that what it is? Right. Yeah, okay. it's yeah. It, it's actually at the beginning of the whole Halo story because before um, the Covenant turned up, it was the uh, it was like rebels who were fighting almost like a galactic civil war. Yes, uh, yes. and that's what they were training for, and then the the hacking uh, Oni, which is kind of like the secret service in in that universe. Oh, it's naval intelligence, isn't it? That's the one, yeah. Um, and they find some footage, first person, and they like, who's this character, you know? And it turns out to be one of the uh, the Spartans. And then all hell breaks loose when the Covenant come down. And you actually, you only get a, about five minutes of the Master Chief, but it's one of the moments where it kind of sends shivers down your spine if you're into the franchise. I'll uh, give that... One... Go on, Sorry, one, one, one thing I'll just say is that one little thing that spoiled it for me was that it didn't get um, the same guy to do the Master Chief's voice. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, Sam Fisher, isn't it? The same bloke who does Sam Fisher and uh, Spinter Cell. Is it? Uh, what's his name? Oh, that's uh, Michael Ironside. Uh, I, don't th- I don't think he does uh, Master Chief, mate. Not in the game. No, it's not. It's not. It's not how I thought it was, actually. Well, yeah. anyway, but it's not the same guy doing the voice, which is a little bit disappointing. But um, otherwise, I think it's excellent. Also, has anyone seen the um, the, the shorts that uh, Neil Blomkamp did for Halo? The Halo Legends series. Yes, they're excellent. Because Neil Blomkamp was going to do the Halo movie. They were, they were well into pre-production before Ooh. Peter Jackson basically... Um, well, I think it all fell through and Peter Jackson said, OK, you can't do that, but let's do District 9 instead. But the shorts that Neil Blomkamp did... No, they were <laughs> excellent. If you watch them, they're on YouTube. There's about three or four of them. These short not, movies watch done them. in the District 9 style and they are brilliant. <laughs> Screw I'll you, Chris. Something else. Uh, the Halo Legend was like uh, an animated series. No, I'm talking about like live action. It was like 12 action. individual um, like fan-made uh, movies. Only about five or ten minutes long each. But there were some really good ones in there. Red versus Blue. That's as far as I went with watching stuff that was Halo yeah. related. And that was started quite funny. I watched some of the, the more recent stuff now. It's gone all serious and yeah. action based, and that it's cinema. It's terrible in my yeah, eyes. Anyway, you know, it's not it, what it, it was. It's totally not what it was. I think it was, you and I were watching it. We were like, remember, it used to be like just some guys in a canyon being idiots. Now they've got a big like, production no, company though, and they, they do yeah. live. I, I watch their um, their podcast every week. Actually, called it's called the No, and they've got um, they've got quite a lot of people working for Rooster Teeth now, and they do. They do um, the churn out news about games, uh, gaming industry and stuff. It's it's very different, very different world now. Just uh, to, uh, 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 just pasted that link in from the uh, uh, Machinima Prime uh, Machinima YouTube yeah, the, um, uh, the, channel. The, the, the Neil Blomkamp one I'm on about the Halo one is called Halo Landfall. Um, and if you haven't seen it, it's really, really worth seeing. It's excellently, it's very well done. Nah, it isn't. Uh, I it might is. check it out because um, <laughs> I, as much as I, as much as I might be perceived to be slagging off Master Chief in the last episode, whatever it was, um, I actually do think that Halo is the kind of thing that would actually translate very well to cinema if you didn't necessarily focus it on Master Chief, because really, you do need to see a, a main character's face, I think, in a film yeah. to identify with them. Yeah, and then the books are like that. The books are mostly about other characters. Maybe that's why yeah. I didn't. Maybe that's one of the reasons I didn't connect with Halo and the story and care about it because I couldn't see his face. He didn't have. Oh, well, we talked about this before in the characters show, didn't we? It's, he didn't yeah. seem to have yeah. a personality in the games. No. But yeah, um, I just I'm, me to me, I'm not usually one to be bothered about like overhyping things, you know. But I think it was. I think Halo in general is overhyped as a game. 
uh, as as like people were like uh, it was brilliant because it was on the it was on the Xbox and it was brand new and it was like oh we've got an amazing first person shooter but we've been playing on PCs first first person shooters that are better than Halo for ages. That's that's prob- that's my opinion of it and I get I played up to three and I just I I don't even think I completed three I'll be honest <laughs> I gave up with it. So, Has anyone enough? seen? Um, <laughs> Has anyone seen? Um, oh, what is it? The Prince of Persia film? Oh, with uh, Jack Gilling, call him. Jake, Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Oh, oh, I watched no. that, but I nearly, I nearly went to watch that. I didn't see it though. No. I haven't seen it. I actually I'm quite enjoyed it's, that. Uh, it's okay. It's not great. It's okay. It sort of, I get it. At least has a stab at doing the story and and yeah. apart from apart from a little bit of uh, everyone's white in it, it's sort of <laughs> casting. Um, was that it, based off the uh, Sands of Time storyline? It was, was. Yeah, it? it was. Yeah, which is the, probably the best storyline, yeah. so like the best contained story that they did. I remember it being about three hours long. I think it probably just felt a bit long because it did. <laughs> it's one of those films where like it sort of sags a bit in the middle, doesn't it? A lot of those films do because they can't stretch out a game. They can't because in a game narrative, you've got stuff to do, whereas in a film, you're watching other people do stuff. Mm. I guess so, I don't know. Well, I enjoyed it anyway. Yeah, it's quite yeah. good. I, 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 I wanted them against one of them that I meant to watch, but I, it passed me by and I forgot about it. Chris, hmm? defend Final Fantasy Spirits of Within because you're the only person in the entire world who likes it. Come on, tell me why you think it's good. I thought it's not. I thought it started out being quite beautiful. That's the way that I describe the the feeling I got from that game because of the whole. Uh, from what I remember, again, it's a bit fuzzy. I can't really remember the story now. But um, I remember a, a, a seed or something dropping from the sky, and it landing, and uh, I can't even remember any characters in it. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> it's not not going well. This not going well. I, I, look, I didn't say I was a fanboy of it. I said I thought it was quite a good. I, I enjoyed it when I watched it. I've got it downstairs. I should really watch it again at some point. Um, Advent Children sticks in my mind a little bit more than Spirits Within. But I thought it was one of those that was. The thing I liked about it the most was the fact that it looked really good, and it, it it was a beautiful game. It was the first one of the Final Fantasy games, wasn't it? It was. It came out before Advent Children. Yes. Yeah. Pretty sure of that. And um, yeah, I, I don't know. It wasn't tied to a game. It was. It was a Final Fantasy story. But again, you know that the games are all different universes. That yeah. was yeah. its own. It wasn't tied to any of the games, right? Yeah, yeah. That, you're correct. Entirely it was correct. the most sci-fi of the um, Final Fantasies as well. It was, it was, it was ostensibly sci-fi rather than steampunk or, or sort of cyberpunk. Well, not cyberpunk, but the sort of it, it, all of the Final Fantasy stuff up until that point had been either um, fantasy or uh, steampunk. But that was just yeah. futuristic as hell, and it, it that was quite jarring for me. I didn't. I, I certainly wouldn't have called it crap. I remember the I, I think memory was- of enjoying it. I think it was a beautiful movie. I, don't get me wrong. I think it was very nicely designed, but I, I, it felt like a cash cow again. It felt like a sort of tie-in for the sake of making some money because Final Fantasy was popular at the time. I remember again uh, reading about it before it came out, and it, yeah, it was popular at the time. But I remember reading about it, and it being all about the effects and all about the CGI and the. I mean, it's coming off the back of the the FMV from from eight. Mm. I believe it was around that time. Around nine, the... I think it came around about nine. I think. Right. Yeah. Aroundish, anyway. You know what I mean. But uh, I'm sure nine's got good FMV as well. I haven't played it, so I can't tell. Can't say. But yeah, I mean, I just remember it, it enjoying the ride, loving the the visual experience, and I can't. I said I can't remember any. Was there a scientist in it? Sid. Was what Sid? So, from... you... No, yeah. There's always a Sid, isn't there? There's always Idiot, a Sid. Yeah. But... Yeah, totally, totally different thing. Right, um, yeah, that's all I can say, really. I just, I know right. that I didn't hate it. <laughs> uh, the Advent Children for me was better, but it was years too late. They should have done that. The, well, at, at the time of Spirits Within, I think, because people were expecting Cloud for yeah. a fact. Yeah, I think, I think I had quite a, a, a quite difficult process getting it translated, because it came out in Japan well before it came out over, over here. The characters felt right to me in that, though. I haven't seen it, and I should really see it because I love the Final Fantasy VII universe. But I'm kind of afraid that it's going to do the Matrix trilogy thing on me and just make me it, like wish I hadn't seen it. It also, um, I say, most of the characters felt right. Sephiroth, it actually made me. 
think of Sef Sephiroth in a different way. Because um, when I played the gate, when I played Final Fantasy VII, I was a little bit confused by him, I think, to say the least. I didn't really know how to take him. I didn't know his personality or what he was. Was he mental? Yeah. Was he was he being brainwashed? Well, I didn't really get it. Yeah, he was mysterious in the game. Yeah, uh, but in that, it was a little bit more obvious, his MO. His MO was like, well, he's all about Genova, really, wasn't he? He's, uh, loves Genova. Yeah, loves, loves that gets that shit all over him. <laughs> so, with him being in Advent Children, do you not kill him at the end of Fantasy VII? It's a prequel, isn't it? Because uh, Aerith's oh, no. in it as well, isn't she? I did find uh, Cloud to be very, very weird in that. Uh, in Advent Children. He, yeah, he's a bit of a bum, isn't he? He's a bit of a dropout. He's like a bit of a waster. Yeah. But he's, he is like that in the, 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 the last part of the game, though, isn't it? When he finds out that he's actually just a clone. Yeah. He yeah. becomes very emo about it all, like, like all the Final Fantasy characters eventually do at some point. I don't think it's a prequel because um, there's other characters that are related to Genova that keep on calling him brother. Uh, big brother. No, I, don't, I haven't so seen it, but I, I thought it was a prequel. Fun. I could be wrong. It's been years since I've seen it myself. Yeah. Um, going back onto games, yeah, mm -hmm. Chronicles of Riddick. Mm. Yeah, I, I haven't I played that, but I, I've heard it's very good. Again, and I know I, you liked it, Steve. Yeah. I I did enjoy it. Um, there's two games there. There was Escape from Butcher Bay that was uh, a prequel to Pitch Black. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, and then years later, they released. Uh, Dark Athena, like a redone version of of Butcher Bay with Dark Athena as well. So two games in one, but it's very much um, a stealth game. Some of that would be up your street for the majority part, and then at the end of it, you just go mental and start ripping the whole uh, the whole prison planet apart. I um I was Sweet. again. It was one of them that I wanted to play, but it passed me by again. I keep doing this with these games. It's like I yeah. <laughs> just I knew I, I knew it got good reviews as well, and I knew that was um, both of the games got good good reception. Well, wasn't yeah. it? There's, there's, there's a lot of choices in the game. Like at the moment here on the video, you've got a choice whether or not you want to kill Johns to start off with or leave him. Hmm. I think it's some like changes the story a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah because I think Johns the can... guy in, in Pitch Black. Yeah, yeah, but I think when you kill him, something happens and it does that whole dream sequence thing and it's not real. Then it goes back after that. Yeah. But you do get, get choices <laughs> that do affect the game at some point. That's awesome. <laughs> it's also obviously the advantage of having Vin Diesel's voice because that guy he has got a mint voice. Oh, did he do? Did he do it as well? Oh, he couldn't really yeah. do it. I, did, I think it was very well tied in with the um because I know the the writers and directors were involved with it as well, weren't they? I, don't, I think David Tui, who uh, did, did the original Pitch Black, was involved with the writing and the making sure it was all consistent. It was a very yeah. well done, very well curated um, tie in. There was See, a lot was... of um, going back and forth in it, though. Like a, uh, a, a lot of missions where you had to go to cell block B and get something and go back to cell block C and go to cell block A and speak to him and go there. Nice. That was a bit annoying. Hmm. What's the plot like? Because one of my issues with, with the films that came out, the Chronicles of Riddick and that, is that I really, what I really liked about Pitch Black was the fact that they did his arc. Like, they did the, you don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy. And at the end of the film, yeah. you do. Like, it's done. Like, what, yeah. where is there else to go? So, for a computer game, I don't know if it's just because it's fun to play as that guy, or is there actually a good story to it? Or well, This is one of the things, again, where you can either go around and you can kill everyone, or you can just knock them out and they disable them. So, you kind of make the choices whether you want to be good or justified, or whether you just want to be an asshole and, you know, go around killing people. I, I think with okay. the, 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 Riddick, the Riddick series, it's just because everyone loves the character so much. I mean, Vin Diesel financed the, um, the latest movie, didn't he? Or he's financing yeah. the, the next one I think because he loves one. playing as the character and he knows people yeah. want to see him, more of him. So it doesn't really matter that there's no arc there anymore. It's just a case if you just want to see this badass uh, being put in uh, different situations. I can totally get on board with that. If, if that's all it is, that's fine by me. But Pitch Black obviously will always be, you know... Yeah. Artistically superior, then would it? Mm. Because it has that sort of that emotional punch to it at the end, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm, a fan, these... I'm a fan of Pitch Black personally. I haven't played the game, as I said. Uh, I th these some elements of the game that do expand, like the movies as well. Like, for example, in Butcher Bay, you you actually go through the process of getting your eyes shined. The shine job. Yeah, so that's how we get it. Obviously, why we can see in the dark, and that's where it comes from. Those it doesn't. I, it's not as kind of uh, as believable as it is in the film where 
In, in the film account, it suggests he has a surgical operation. In the game, it's magic. Some, <laughs> some kind of voodoo guy gets stoned and goes like, Wurr! and then you can see in the dark. <laughs> nice. You've 20 mental oh. tools, you're not getting surgery. You're just getting <laughs> 20 <magic>. mental tools. <laughs> Like cigarettes are extortion of prices. You can get like you know a heart transplant for a few fags. <laughs> so this is an interesting one as well because it's not it's not a tie-in like you know we talked about other games like the Spider-Man Two game where you play through the story of the film. You, you, it's an expansion of the universe really, but it is a yeah. tie-in at the same time. Now that's a, that's like a more interesting concept for games in my opinion because yeah, it's be, it'd, be, it'd be more interesting if they did like a Batman between the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rises if they weren't going to do that. But you know what I'm saying? That would be a more interesting thing to do. Tell us yeah. a story we've not had yet and have more creative freedom for yourself because you're not tied to the narrative of a film which does not translate into a computer game. I yeah. think that's what actually makes the Halo stuff so good for me because it does tell stories that are outside the scope. It's like some scene setting or, or filling in the gaps. See, that's what... Um... That's what a lot of studios want, though they want an IP, don't they? So they can do that. So they can, so they can create a universe and merchandise it and get extra tie-ins from all different angles, not just yeah. other games. You know, they, they they want all this, all these movies and I don't know bands called after them. See that? There's a few yeah. bands that call themselves after after game stuff as well these days. There's a few that I've seen yeah. seen out there. Yeah, there's a lot of bands that call themselves after anything. Yeah, yeah it's hard to think of yeah. band names, as Chris and I can confirm. Yeah. It's oh, hard. Some great, now, we've come up with some great band names, but they're all wildly inappropriate and can only be used in the same context if you're like um, if you're supporting Cannibal Corpse. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That is that is one of one of the many issues of coming up with a band name. If it's funny, how long is it going to be? If you were actually wanted to be, a, well, it's totally not a relevant topic for discussion <laughs> anyway. So let's not even bother going there. <laughs> Sorry for all the yawning, by the way, guys. I um, my missus last night decided to boot me quite a bit, and I didn't get much sleep. <laughs> I slept on the couch for most of the night. No, there's um, there's places you can go. There's refuges, Chris. You don't yeah, have to. Yeah. I might have it's, to. But it's not your to. fault. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I know, I keep um, telling myself that, but it comes. I think back up to forty percent of domestic domestic abuse is the woman against the man. You know, it's not. There's nothing to be ashamed it's, it's of. It's at man. least eighty percent in my house. <laughs> Um, staying on the same sort of theme about uh, computer games that kind of fill in the gaps, uh, South Park, The Stick of Truth. Yes. I've not played it yet. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put the footage on and not oh. watch it because I, want, I don't want to spoil it, and it, it's one of them that I'm definitely going to play. You might want to mute this, then. Mute yeah. Uh, but the game itself is fantastic. The production values are brilliant. Um, just the whole style of it, it feels like you're actually playing an episode. And yeah. If, if you follow South Park, it fits in... Um, between two big story segments within the the series, um, and it's the the battle between um, the PS4 and the Xbox One, and then they kind of get bored and they say at the end of it, "Oh, <laughs> the, what do you want to play with PS now? This stick." And then it goes into this, and it's the stick of truth, which it's kind of got a bit of a um, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones type of feel about the whole thing. Very it's, much. Uh, it's, Skyrim sort of is a big uh, sort of uh, influence yeah, well, in the game, isn't I, it? I meant from like yeah. a movie point of view. When you level up, you have the South Park version of the duh, duh, like yeah. the little Skyrim thing. Whenever you level yeah. up, it does all that. And he's, so even the music, well. uh, you've got Cartman. Yeah, you know, um, like when you're playing through Skyrim, you get that kind of oh. oh yeah, it's Cartman doing it's that. Cartman doing it in the background, and, <laughs> so good. Uh, and the way you upgrade your weapons as you're a kid, you know, like if you have a stick, then to make it more powerful, you dip the stick in dog poo. Or you put yeah. like a lightning sticker on it, and that kind of <laughs> yeah. adds the effect of it. Yeah, no, but that's how it works. I and do you put like the stickers make it have an effect. If you put like a gross out skull and crossbow sticker, it has a poison effect. It's just yeah, it's it so is. what it really catches that thing that I love about South Park because it's so adult and so clever. But they always bring it back down to what it is like to be like a ten year old kid yeah. and getting that mindset, and that the game does that all the way through. No, it's it's awesome. I mean, uh, like armor bonuses, you get you know like a bit of tin foil like wrap around you, and that that adds so so much to your armor, and you know gives gives your other like buffs and effects. It's a really good game, and the production values are excellent. It's it, it's not as long as I would have liked it to be. I got yeah, through it quite I would, quickly. Uh, I but the way you level up on it, I, I I hope so. Uh, but the way you level up on it is you get Facebook friends or the equivalent of Facebook friends, and the more friends you get, the higher level you get. 
Um, have, have, have you completed it, Sam? Yeah, I completed it. Yeah, it's very. Uh, you beat the Canada then. Yeah, yeah. That's Canada's so all eight uh, bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a really, really good effect in it as well, because obviously the take the piss out of Canadians has been, well, the the the, the worst animated, and you know, they kind of goes on with that theme. And that's the footage that shows it looks exactly like the TV show, which is so yeah. great. Like it looks, you just feel like you're just in it, and you're there, and you've got Butters as your companion, or you can pick any of the characters. But come yeah, on, yeah. Butters, Butters, Butters is, is awesome. Best. But this is probably my, might be my favourite character in it. And just a little quips to put in there. The collectibles. Um, Chipokemon. Yeah, Chipokemon! <laughs> <laughs> and then when they, um, they do loads of like game satire stuff, like you go around a, a, a ship and you keep finding like Bioshock-style diaries and he's like, yeah. oh, the aliens are attacking. I don't know why I feel the need to record this, but I should probably be doing something more important like stockpiling weapons. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, but... If you haven't played it, play it. It's an awesome game. Yeah, yeah you won't regret it. It also gets a resident. What was it? A resident's accolade. Definitely. Yeah, a resident's <laughs> accolade. Right, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris, you can come back now. Is he? What's he doing? I don't Has know. Has he actually got off? He's on the side. He's doing something. I don't know. We need to give him a signal that we've stopped spuffing over South Park. <laughs> <Like a tree>. <laughs> <laughs> that was there a bit of a that was the side from Team America, wasn't yeah, it? The, uh... yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hi, Chris, you antisocial bastard. So, yeah, I, the, there's other South Park games that have been released previous to this one as well um, yeah. that have been utterly terrible. So when I found out that this was a good game, I was quite, um, you know, that I was quite enamoured and being a South Park fan... Although Wasn't this a South Park snow, snowball game or something where it was all like 3D? There was 3D. South Park 3D where you could throw your snowballs and then urinate on a snowball. And yeah, God. That was bad. And there was also... We played um, that at land once, didn't we? Yeah, you, we did. Do you remember playing um, South Park models in Quake 2? Yes, I do. Yeah. And uh, Cartman sounds and things like that is ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to playing that. So whatever you Google guys said job, about it. It's got a resonance accolade. <laughs> no, we can't we can't give it that unless unless at least two of us have played it. Me and two Sam of us have played, played it. it. Oh, have you played it, Sam? I didn't think you'd played it yet. I completed it. Oh, cool. It's class. Cool. All right. Well, I'll um, I'll I'll be getting on that. Can I mention the Mortal Kombat movie? Mm. I'm not gonna say Please do. I'm not, I'm not going to say there are two movies because there are not. There's only one. <laughs> The second one's worth watching just for no, a so it's bad it's not. good. <laughs> it didn't exist. Yeah, I, it's another one which is which is rife with cheese. It's actually directed by um, uh, Geordie. Oh, <laughs> funny enough, it's um, Paul W. S. Anderson who did uh, um, oh, yeah. what's uh, 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 Resident Evil? Didn't he do those? Yes, he did. And uh, uh, Alien vs. Predator, didn't he do that too? Yes, he did. And he also did the one with Lawrence Fishburne from ages ago with Sam Neill in it, the um, the Black Hole one, what's it called? Oh, oh uh, called that was Event Horizon. Event, Event Horizon, Horizon. Yeah. Yeah. yes, he That's did that That's a cool well. film. Oh, but cool. anyway, yeah, um, it's 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 cheesy, but it's I, I enjoyed it. But I, I think I saw it at a time when I was the right age to enjoy it. Yeah, me too. What's the, uh, the guy called out the Highlander movies? The f- um, oh, Christopher uh, Lambert. Oh, Christoph yeah. Lambert. <laughs> yeah, Christoph he plays Lambert. Same, guy, same guy that's in yeah. Wet, 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 right? <laughs> <laughs> what? what? <laughs> the lead singer of Wet, Wet, Wet. I've forgotten his name. What? It's not the same guy at all. It no, just looks not. a bit like it's him. Christopher in my, Lambert. In my head, it does at least, anyway. The one redeeming feature from the Mortal Kombat movie that I remember is the sound, uh, is the, just, uh, the theme song. Oh, that oh, I what's it called? Go, Johnny Cage. Yeah, Scorpion. I, I, in fact, I had that on tape back back in the day, and uh, I had it on my tape player, and I used to listen to it at school, uh, along with a lot of Kevin Bloody Wilson stuff. If you've ever heard of him, <laughs> yeah, look him up about. if you don't know. He's utterly disgusting, but funny at the same time. But yeah, I, I thought that was worth a mention because although it does fit into the category of terrible game tie-ins. It's well, uh, it's kind of enjoyable as well. It, although I watched bits of it recently, Sam, and I was like, Sam, "Oh I, Christ!" I can see you coming up, up with loads of excuses as to why it's maybe not so terrible, but it is utterly <laughs> terrible. It, I'm not even going to let you 
It is terrible, but it's like no, it's, there's it's, no but. It's fun. It's fun as hell. It is fun. It is fun. Yeah, but so's it's really the, enjoyable. So's the the Street Fighter film in that case. Yeah, it, no, but as I say, Mortal Kombat's closer to a sort of commando type fun than yeah. Street Fighter, which is much more just crap. Like it, it, Street Fighter's incompetent, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think there are there certain movies and things Street Fighter falls in this category that are terrible unless you're watching them with your mates, in which case they are hilarious. Yeah, they'll actually make a night. I could imagine sitting down and watching Street Fighter with you guys and. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, the entire I'm thing. with you there. Sure. Yeah, the, the, again, most Arnie films fit into that category, but <laughs> you know, get out, get out, <laughs> get to the get chopper, out. get out, dear. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so we, we're kind of running out of things on the on the the game movies list. You know, I there is one I want to talk about, and it's not t- again not tied to anything. But in terms of a game that a film that absolutely loves computer games, uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World is like a love letter to them. It is, but it's a love letter to mostly Nintendo games as well. Um, yes and no. It's got a lot of Nintendo stuff in it, but it, it's games in general and, and sort of and game sort of culture and ideas and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but the vast majority, like most of the. Like the little sound effects that occur and Nintendo sound effects. Most of the, I'm not saying it's a bad thing because I like I like Nintendo. I'm just saying that it it does tend to lean a lot more towards that than. I think that's just because Nintendo is more recognisable. Yes. They generally tend to keep their sounds quite similar across their uh, across their different well, IPs anyway. The the, the, the total rip offs of the the you know they're they're I think they probably license them they're, they're exactly the same sounds you know. But, the, you know, there's things like, you know, jumping around collecting coins and that kind of stuff, like jumping around on the platforms and that. It's all, it all kind of comes from that. You've got a point that it's probably more recognizable, well, definitely more recognizable because Nintendo sell more consoles than any other of the, uh, well, they used to sell more consoles than any other of the um, console developers, but... It's got, it, seemed, it sounds to me like it should have everything that I would look for in a movie and it's directed by Edgar Wright it's uh, it's a film about kind of games really. it's it, it kind of done it's... in the game style. but I, I've got no interest in watching it and I never have I've, I bought it recently I watched it when it came out with Sam actually I think we went to see it together and, yeah. uh, I did enjoy it I enjoyed it a lot and I enjoyed the um, I enjoyed the re- uh, watching it again and I noticed a lot more things in it the time I watched it again there's no superfluous romance in it you know like a lot of these Films that are just trying to be uh, appeal to the the widest audience. It, mm. it I think it's interesting to people who don't play games as well because it kind of it kind of reinforces a bit of a stereotype at the same time as challenging it. It doesn't, yeah. you know. It, it, Scott Pilgrim isn't like the typical geeky geek, but he is a bit of a geek. But I, I I actually quite like the effects on the film more than most of it, and the. There's a lot of subtle nods as well in to, to mm. games and moments in games as well. Uh, I can't yeah. think off the top of my head what, but I do when I watched it back again. I remember thinking well, it was a, quite clever. There's a bit where the um, they have like a sort of music competition, mm. and I believe they they end up summoning through playing their music. They summon two creatures, which I believe are both Final Fantasy summons from an earlier Final Fantasy game. Um, it's like a big sort of monkey monster type thing and a big two headed dragon. They'd be bomb. And I think, I think they're uh, dragon, yeah. I think they're both Final Fantasy summons directly. I mean, I think it's also, uh, there's also a bit where he does a sixty four combo as well, isn't he? Like giving a hat tip to uh, Killer Instinct and yeah. he gets one ups and stuff through it and Yeah. And I mean one of the one of the things that I would say about the film that really is the driving force of it is that the comedy in it is like spot on. Like it's when it wants to be funny, it'll have you laughing out loud properly. But like again, it, it, the timing of it and everything is so good. Uh, even though it does appeal to a wider audience as a general film, it's also got a lot of um, a lot of like in jokes for gamers as well. And mm. I, I, and the, but the hidden, the hidden from people who don't play games. Yeah, I'm right. It wasn't a success, was it? It was a it was a box office failure. Yeah, I don't know. I thought it did. I, well. don't, I mean, it, don't think it, it, it did didn't well. do very well. Oh. It was critically very well received. It got great reviews. That might but be it, what it, I'm thinking. It, yeah. um, I think it people didn't just do that weren't well sure what it was. Office. What it was meant to be. I didn't say what it was. What was on the tin, like Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, yeah. I think people didn't really. 
People like like us that might have like gone to see it and sort of knew the buzz about it, and obviously your your comic book geeks and there's a lot of anime in there as well. There's a lot of anime references and style. Mm. So people that are all into that kind of world of general sort of geekery, I guess they were up for it. But I guess when it comes down to it, that does actually represent a fairly small part of society because all the people that go see the Avengers, ninety percent of them haven't ever read an Avengers comic book, and I kind of include myself in that because I like comic books. I've never read the Avengers particularly, but I still yeah. would go and watch the film. So Scott Pilgrim had that working against it. It didn't have the big juggernaut of, you know, a Marvel or a DC behind it making it a ubiquitous franchise that everybody already knew about before going to see it. Yeah, I, it's, it, there's, there's another film which is uh, Wreck It Ralph, which I assume you've you've seen. Um, I haven't actually. I I won't none of you. Yeah. Really? I, have. I went to see. Well, yeah. I went to see I've... some other film, and I saw a trailer, so I know what it's about roughly. But that's it. I, I think Wreck It Ralph got it very, it got it got it very right in that it didn't just stick with Nintendo. It it covered everything, and it got some really obscure references. And a lot of the time, you're thinking, how the hell did they get the, the how did they get the rights to to do that? Because they've got car- like actual characters from real yeah, games. Yeah, I mean, they had everyone from like Sonic and Mario down to really old stuff like Cubert and. It's almost like the modern day version of Fantasia in that you've got all these characters from different hmm. companies all in one movie and it's really nicely done and it's a good story. Um, is it Pixar? Like it, Ralph? I think it's just Disney, but it's like Disney oh, right. 3D animation. I don't think it's, it's a Pixar studio. And Pixar owned by Disney now or is it still yeah, DreamWorks? But Pixar do, no, no uh, Pixar is owned by Dream, uh, Disney and I think the modern ones are called Disney animation Disney or whatever. But, but yeah, but but it's not an actual Pixar product, and you can tell yeah. that it's not as good as the Pixar movies. Every Pixar movie is always very good, um, and this is even the shots, even the shots that the Pixar did, like pre, you know, before and after the movies on the DVDs and uh, on the cinemas, they were all very funny, very good. Were you just saying Cars two there? I said Car- oh, Cars one, bad enough. Oh, I quite like Cars. Never saw it. It's 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 so it's well animated, but it's the most generic, pointless. Film like ever, <clears throat> but yes, we're going slightly off topic but, here. So yeah, so, but, but um, Wreck It Ralph, <laughs> yeah, it's really nice, uh, really nicely done movie. It's not brilliant, it's not massively memorable, but it does, it does hit the spot when it comes to the game references and it and it gets the game references very right. It's obviously done by people who understand how the games work, um, and it's just it's 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 nice. It's a uh, it's comforting to watch as a gamer. Hmm, cool. I do want to check it out. Yeah, it's, again, it's on my list, but I haven't watched a film for years, <laughs> literally years. <laughs> I have just I've went off it. I've, I've, I keep buying like films that I want to watch, and I've got stacks of them now. I just, I still have time. <laughs> uh, another game. Yeah, go on then. Robocop. Which one? The original. Uh, the side scroller. <laughs> yeah. Now we we have talked about doing an episode about game music. And if we were talking about game music, I would say that Robocop on the 8-bits has the best music ever, basically. It's one of my favourite oh, tunes. It's oh, one of my favourite tunes. But the game itself, I don't think it's that much cop. I think it's very <laughs> generic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no pun intended there. It's I'm not much robot. Good. Oh, I meant cop. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, this isn't the one I remember. It is. It does look very similar, but I think I, I played it on the Commodore oh, this, 64 this again. Is this is it. This is about the extent of the entire game as well. There's basically yeah, all yeah. the Robocop games look like this. And trying to get up them <laughs> bloody stairs. Yeah. Hitting, hitting up and forward just at the right... Oh, God, no. It wasn't a good game, but it had great music. Yeah, the, the, the music was the most memorable thing about it. It reminds me of Stallone's Cobra. There was a game for Cobra that. Cobra was well. a great game. Yeah, Cobra was a great game, actually. I found that very difficult, though. Oh, yeah, but it's uh, like we said at the start, out all 8 big games are difficult. I've not seen the film. Everyone had hairy chests back then, Chris. Uh, yeah. Did anyone ever play uh, Robocop vs. Terminator? I Maybe. saw you playing it on the Mega Drive. Yeah. I do remember a Terminator side scroller like this from, from back in the day. A Terminator uh, Robocop 2. Robocop vs. Terminator was basically the same as the original Robocop, but obviously the graphics have been upgraded, but it had gore in it, and it yeah. was impossible to complete. Impossible? Well, it, it, it got the point where I, I actually cheated to give myself like 100 lives, and I think I only had two left by the end of it. There's basically, you, you go into Skynet, and there's a big Terminator skull that flies around the room that you've got to try and destroy. <laughs> and whether it was just because I... 
Staple of the 90s, you get to yeah, the end of the game skull. and a massive skull or face flies around the screen at you. <laughs> Trope! This looks like yeah. an Amiga game, is it Amiga? This no, is Mega Drive. Drive. Oh, right. I like how Robocop in this game looks a little bit mitzy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's got his massive Desert Eagle extended <laughs> cannon. But he's got his hand out. It's like, yeah, it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little teapot. One of the uh, the more You're memorable teapot. You could actually, yeah, uh, if if you fought an Ed 209, you could take his gun off him and then use his gun to fire, oh, yeah, which is yeah, like yeah, immensely that was powerful. Cool, that. Yeah, I didn't play this one. Did you ever have like any little? But little sound bites of like dead or alive, you're coming with me. Or it did. Like I had like, like uh, the Ed 209 growl in it and things like that. Yeah, I remember playing this, or at least a friend having a copy that I might have played. Mm. Spinning I, head, collecting I, spinning heads. I, I just remember <laughs> it being the same thing over and over again, just like bouncing around, killing various different level baddies, and then you got to the end boss, and that was just impossible. You got but locked this, in a room. This is fitting into that that what I talked about right at the start, which is that yeah. the TV t- TV movie tie-ins tended just to be. Platformers. It's like what we're going to do. We'll do a platform with the character in. Mm. There was no thought yeah. behind it at all. Like all the Disney games are all platformers, as far as I can remember. Um, well, these one. days they're all third-person action adventure, which that's the new one. Well, yeah, yeah. You know. yeah it's just it did, like, did... have a bit of thought about it. I mean, there's there's cool stuff you can do, and I know that you you kind of you do this and you shoehorn the cool bits from the movies and other the the. the, the the TV shows or whatever, but it'd just be, it'd be, I don't know, it'd be nice to either for them to not do it and leave us with the memories of the really good ones <laughs> where the, the company actually enjoyed doing it and wanted to do it rather than yeah. just get paid to do it because and get paid to do it quickly because the movie was out. I don't mm. know. Well, that could lead us into quite nicely into what is still considered by some to be the best um, tie-in game of all time. What's that? Uh, which, well, uh, 007 Goldeneye the N64 ah, oh, right. yeah, yeah. Ah, yes. we, I mean I don't really know how much we can say about this that we've not already said because it's come up a few times for us but it still has to get a mention in it, this topic it's going it to get does. a mention but I mean the game itself was brilliant but as I've, I've said before that there was some bits that like just a simple thing like not being able to fall off a, a surface just did my head in oh, get over it Chris but in terms of it fitting in with the film I can't comment because I've never seen the film. It actually everything. follows the plot very quite well. Actually, you do it. You go to nearly every place that you go that they go in the film. Yeah. Right. Who who chose this video? By the way, there's no gameplay in this. It's wrong. Uh, no, this is this is. It is. It's doing the intro beat, and then it goes to just the first level. This is literally someone starting up the console, and then the game starts. I, I, it's I about eight that. minutes in where the uh, gameplay starts. By Jesus looking at Christ. What's wrong with you? There we go. Oh, this is the first level in it. Yeah. It's the, uh, that Sorry, one. I thought I'd linked it into the um, to where the gameplay starts. Obviously, didn't. Soz. Sozard. <laughs> I remember trying to like I tried to speed run to that. Um, oh, the watch. Yeah. Oh, the watch. And the what a cool idea the watch that was. as well. When you had to get out of the uh, the, the jail cell. How oh, close yeah. is it? Was watch there? It's like this. <laughs> <laughs> in before Apple, though. In before yeah. Apple. What's he doing? I've got this time this, in the game as well. This guy is absolutely terrible at this game. What's he doing? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I don't, uh, again, it was it was quite hard to find footage. He didn't have somebody going, so uh, I've got to do this or the other, and, uh, that, 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 and have logos all over it. So, so instead you found one that's just <laughs> all intro, and then this guy looking at a wall for... Yeah. Right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to call this guy out. Learn to play games, whoever you are. <laughs> a noob. Yeah, you don't put <laughs> a video of news. yourself being an idiot on YouTube. <laughs> well, well, we do, we do every week. That's what <laughs> What's he doing? Come on! I can move! He's having technical dis- difficulties, Chris. <laughs> he's having tentacle difficulties. Hey, yes! That's why he's I, don't, um, I don't watch through every single w- all the videos that I post on this, you know, so... Oh, <laughs> so. God. He's just, he's just emptied an entire clip out of a wall. The thing about this is, this did this come out around the same time as GoldenEye? No, they held it back no, to make was... sure the game was good. That's what I thought. And uh, Nintendo, I think, as much as I do like to slag them off, I think Nintendo basically stepped in with this and said, look, get this right, guys. This is on a flagship console. Oh, that sniper rifle. Oh, it was amazing. And I'm glad they did it. I'm glad that Nintendo, who know how to do games, made Rare like 
properly get this right. Seriously, I mean, is this guy never played are... a game before? What's wrong with him? Sorry, I don't know. It's... So, this this, this it's probably just... isn't the best showcase of what the Such game is. Gaming about, is aristocracy, aren't you? It says you. <laughs> This is coming from Speedrun Lou. <laughs> <laughs> why aren't you? Why haven't you finished the game yet? I haven't got past the start menu yet. <laughs> I've seen speedruns of this actually. Uh, um, I think I have actually. But yeah, I mean, I, it's a brilliant game through and through. The entire entire single player is is worth playing even today, and the the multiplayer, I think, has probably dated quite a lot now. I think the multiplayer. But- you know, I reckon like, again, if us four had a couple of beers and sat around and played it, we'd have a laugh. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Never going to happen though. That is it. <coughs> no. Maybe. <laughs> you never know. Do you get ported to anything? Is it? It's on PC. Uh, yeah, there's a Gold Nine Double O Seven uh, Source, I think. Oh yes, there is. Yeah. I don't know how it works. I don't know if it's online or not. I think it's quite. I think, I think it's quite. Well, it will be, won't it? It's Source. Yeah, I think point. it's actually quite accurate as well. I think it does like the the gun doesn't does the cursor move and drag the screen around with it in Goldeneye. I think it does, oh. doesn't it? Yeah. If you yeah, press the too. trigger, yeah. If you press one of the triggers, yeah, you can... yeah, you can aim the gun independently of the view. But otherwise, it just if you see whenever he goes near a, an enemy, the 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 gun does that. It 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 always <laughs> towards it. Yeah, it does when you get close enough. I'm gonna shoot Which him. again, the game would be a little bit unplayable without it because you can't aim that well with the Nintendo. No. Controller. The, no. the analog stick was uh, really kind of stingy, wasn't it? Yeah, and it yeah, wasn't. It was yeah, it wasn't very. There's only one of them as well. Yeah, in the middle. Um, I know we're running out of time here, guys, but I think there's there's a, a question I'd like to ask you is um, what movie or TV show or anything like that had do you think has not been done justice with the game yet? Either hasn't had a game made at all, or hasn't had a decent game made of it? Um, EastEnders. Arrested Development. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Seriously? Both of those right um, for... Well, I would say, um, it's just something that we every time we sort of load up and we're talking about it and spuffing over it, um, Game of Thrones kind of probably deserves a really good crack at a, ga- a, a game. But it comes down to what kind of game is it because Game of Thrones has action in it, but it isn't an action show. So is it an action game? I, I see or an, an RPG? for some reason. Or an adventure game even might work, where you've got to like build alliances and lie to people and have conversations and backstab. Well, there is, and... there is, there is a game. It's a like Facebook game. It's it's like a basically um, you you've got to manage your um, family or something like that. But it's it's your typical kind of spreadsheet Facebook game. Oh, it's not can, you give you, can you call yourselves the own name like the Twatterlies? Yeah, and have like a like a, just a big <laughs> bellend as your as your house sigil. <laughs> <laughs> that it's, would be it's terrible. And uh, I agree. I think Game of Thrones is rife for making a great game. But I, I, I'm like you. I struggle to think what kind of a game would it be. Would it be a massively multiplayer game? Would it be an RPG of some kind? I'm uh, seeing somewhat along the lines of uh, Elder Scrolls. What What I do like yeah. though is that people have had a crack at least at, at, at representing some of these these worlds. Um, and something that I pointed out uh, a few days ago to you guys, but um, it's worth putting on the stream is Westeros Craft, which is where. A group of people have basically made all of Westeros in Minecraft. Now, I know Minecraft <laughs> has become the kind of go-to for making worlds. I think Because it, it looks just like real life. It does, yeah. <laughs> I think Middle Earth's been recreated and loads of scenes from various uh, TV shows and films have been recreated in Minecraft. But this stood out because it's huge and really well done. Um and they are thinking about trying to turn it into some kind of RPG as well. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it. I think it's really sad creating worlds this big in in Minecraft. <laughs> I was talking if there were small worlds, but when you get really big, it becomes sad. Well, not actually. No, I think I think creating worlds in a game that's already been created for you. It looks nice. Don't get me wrong, but I don't. I don't that's I, cool. Man. Doesn't doesn't feel creative to me, really. I don't know. You know, if you want to make this, make your own bloody game. Go, go for it properly, and you know, but don't I, have the constraints of what Minecraft constrains you to. Constraints. Yes and no. I mean, the the, the man, Minecraft does constrain you, but by constraining you to these meter meter by one meter by one meter bricks, basically, it means that you can create big worlds at quite a big scale. But I think the thing. The thing I like about this is it goes back to what we were talking about a bit earlier. I really love the world, 
And so for someone to make that world so I can walk around in it, it just makes me really excited. It's like I love Lord of the Rings. And then when I saw that people were recreating scenes from the Lord of the Rings movies and from the books, that was, to me, it felt awesome. It's like I can go to these worlds that I've previously just imagined just watched on a TV. And I think that is the essence of these tie-ins. And I think that the, the, the most important thing that a tie-in can <clears throat> deliver to someone is being able to inhabit the world. Yeah. I agree. Given someone I would, the, I would, to do um, that. the one that I would really like to see, and they kind of are doing it, but um, again, I've sort of spuffed over this to various people before, but the um, the Avatar series, and again, not James Cameron's Avatar, the the, cart- the American anime-style cartoon Avatar. They are doing a Legend of Korra game, um, but yeah, I would love like a proper open world like version of the Four Nations where you get to go around as the Avatar and learn the four elements learn your different fighting styles as you go and like get into that world again like the game of thrones world i want to go live in the four nations world and like walk around that like massive world that would be amazing if someone could really do like a big rpg action version of that that would be amazing mm. yeah i just uh, that i like this because it lets you you visit that world i think and i think and i'd be really excited to see this with uh, the oculus rift as well i think that'd be really cool and I don't even care that it's all at low definition, big blocks. I think I still think the amount of work well, that's gone into it. It's and got the, a style. The... It's got a good, a nice oh. style. The Minecraft, you know, world creation. But you're still creating a world that's said constrained. Castle by... block. <laughs> Con- Love yeah. it. So yeah, it's it's that... still constrained by the constraints of Minecraft, and I, I just don't feel that. I don't feel like that's very creative in my eyes. I, I, I think personally. Minecraft has got the got the resolution right so that these sort of things can happen. If it was any, if it was any finer the detail, then these things wouldn't happen. They just be t- it just take too long. It is. I think it is creative in terms of it's letting people who love something. Ex- it, it's an expression of how they feel about it. Like it, I look at it this way. It's the same as me. Like when I used to look at like Batman and Spider Man comic books and try and draw the pictures myself. Like, mm. try and draw it the way Todd McFarlane used to draw Spider-Man. I'd try and, like, draw like that because I loved it and I wanted to be... It's like Lou said, you want to be a part of it. These people are doing it because they're they're into it and it makes them feel good and happy to invest themselves in well, it's one joining of the, into um, that world. It's it's one of the biggest forms of flattery, isn't it, imitation? And that's what these people are doing. They're, they're, they're imitating the world because they love it so much. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I get that. I so it's it just, it just. I mean, this this is why I bring this up because this this kind of epitomizes that question, which is, what 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 do you feel hasn't been done justice in some way? What 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 movie do you love, or what TV series do you love that you would love to see as a tie-in, or even books or comics or something? I mean, I still think there's a, a sad loss that Al- the Aliens franchise mm. has not been given mm. the the, the right to shine. I mean, the first two Alien, Alien and Aliens films are, are very different films in their own right. And yeah. uh, the, what I mean, the first one's a horror, the second one's an action film, basically. Yeah. But they're both brilliant in, in their own way. I mean, three, again, questionable, but still decent in places. Watch the director's cut and you'll enjoy it a lot more. I know, I've seen that. I've got the director's cut. Um, ah. Okay, here we go. I, I, now, when you said director's cut, something popped into my head. Blade Runner. I'd love to see a Blade Runner world. I'd love to see a mm. game that's that does that justice. There's there was an unreal a game, wasn't there? No, I don't think there was. But there was an Unreal um, tournament map, which was a recreation of the Blade Runner world, which nice. was very beautifully done. That would all, be cool. It was that's very a... cool. Um, oh, one sec, I'll see if I can find it quickly. Yeah, there was a Blade Runner video game released in 1997. We we Obviously don't know a bit about crappy, it though, so yeah. Hey. Can't yeah, be that good. <laughs> either, either it's crap or it's severely underrated gem that we don't know about. <laughs> it doesn't look like the movie. <laughs> um, but that would I'll be a cool world because you could do that whole sort of investigating. Uh, what are they called? Synthetics, is it they're called in it or whatever? Yeah. They're called. Um, simulants. Simulants. You could do that whole investigating that story. Would be quite cool. Like interviewing people, and it'd be a bit like an LA noir type thing, but you know, like having that sort of type of gameplay would work for it possibly yeah oh chris i put a link to the um to the map in the the document there it's um it's it's very impressive someone's basically re- recreated loads of the different scenes and sections from the world um and you know like the um you know the building that um uh, you know the the the, mod, the doll maker guy lives in mm. 
Um, it's a famous building in, in San Francisco, I think. Um, yeah. They've got that in there, recreated and stuff. It's just it's really nicely done. Uh, it looks nice. Yeah, it looks it's nice. Then the Unreal Engine looks nice, unless someone's absolutely terrible at making maps. But there's a lot of detail in this, and um, I, I haven't watched the video myself, but it, it, there's just loads of different locations from the movie that's in it. Uh, it, it is very nice, especially when you get down to street level and it's got the um, the spinners, the police spinners and stuff down there. Is this just somebody just just flying through the level with yeah, the Yeah, someone, someone's just no clipping through the map just so they can show you it, but it's it's a huge map, really detailed. All done by one person as well in the UT2004 engine. It is very detailed, isn't it? <clears throat> so yeah, I'm people have had a crack at this. I'm trying to think of a movie now that I'd like to see as a game, but my mind's went completely blank. A movie. Here's a there you go. Like there's, there's the um, mm. there's the build that was on about. Actually, no, that's the right way around, isn't it? Yeah, I'm totally see the asleep today. Guys. What do you um, what do you reckon then? Uh, just to make another question, unless it's day you can sort of think about this in the background, but I'm going to put another question out there. Um, what do you think to the whole thing of um, because there are certain, there are talks about doing things like Uncharted and Metal Gear Solid and all these kind of things as films. And I don't think, that with, with games like that, that already have a very cinematic presentation, that you need to do it. And, and again, like a Last of Us film, you're there going, how could a two-hour film match a 20-hour game? Like, in terms of what, how, how invested you're going to be in it. You know, I, go, I don't see how they could ever be as good as playing the game. A game that's already meant to be very cinematic, in the case of something like Metal Gear or Uncharted or The Last of Us or any of those. I agree with that. I, I think that the, the games have already done that job, haven't they? It's like you don't need a movie to do it for you because it's already been done so well. Mm. Um, it's like the half a Half Life movie just wouldn't work. Yeah, either. what's the point? You know, make Half Life three, please. Yeah, I than, mean, <laughs> fill the, the gaps. By all means, fill the gaps, but don't try and recreate the actual game experience because yeah. that already delivered the the experience very well and everyone had their own unique experience of that and then for a film to try and recreate that but give a genericized view of that the only way they can do that is to make the game complete so the movie completely different like they did with uh, resident evil mm. because everyone's had such a unique experience of that themselves yeah so i was just thinking there what might make a good game it would be 28 days later no no, I disagree. I'm I'm sick of zombie games. I've had <laughs> enough of them. I've I haven't really played that many zombie games oh, in a while. Thousands so of them. I know right? that's why I stopped playing them. Um, but just yeah. kind of like to do more of like a like like a horror game. Well, the, there's quite a lot of good zombie horror games. I'm not saying that all the zombie games are terrible. I'm just saying there's a, quite a lot of good ones, but there's also quite a lot of horrible ones. Um, uh, zombie in the chat has just said the game movies suck. Really, for real. Um, yeah, no, totally, 100%. Most I'm of them do, yeah. Him. Most of uh, them do, yeah. Z Zombie came in late, unfortunately. He didn't hear my rant earlier about, well, about the fact that since childhood, my uh, my opinion on, on game tie uh, movie tie-ins, no, hang on, game movie tie-ins, that's what it is, uh, is it's been tainted by really crappy versions, and these days I tend to just avoid them. That's why I'm being a lot quieter than not on that, and I'm tired. Um, and people, are, everyone's criticising my internet connection. I'm getting sulky. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm still looking at this video of the of the, the um, Blade Runner stuff. I think it's amazing. Yeah, it's it cool. does look nice. Yeah. I'm is there a game impressed. amongst all this, or is it just no? A big map? It's 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 just a big map. There's not really that much you can do in it apart from open doors and stuff like that as well. So it's not a map you could play with your friends. It's just a map you'd explore. Oh, there was a, there was a, made it into a game. Hmm. Yeah, there's there was a point um, near the end of. Um, UT 2004's popularity where lots of people were just using the engine to recreate scenes from TV shows and movies and real locations and stuff and this was one of the memorable ones for me I never knew about it, I'm quite enamoured I'll be honest. It's, it's a beautiful map yeah. Did anybody ever play the uh, Starship Troopers game? No. 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 Well, then again, that was I, recent I, wasn't it? That I was quite recent. I don't think I've seen the film either. Was that yeah. quite recent? Um, I'm trying to remember when it was now. Oh well, I'm trying, trying to remember. You should see the up. movie. You should see the movie. By the way, it's excellent. Yeah, it's funny as. It's um, by Paul, Paul Verhoeven who did uh, Robocop and Total Recall. Two thousand and five. Um, right. That was more recent. Yeah. A long time after the film, then. Do um, Sam, 
I, I remember buying you for one of your birthdays uh, a Simpsons game. Oh yeah, the Simpsons game. I think it was. Was it the Sim? Was it Hit and Run? Oh, uh, do you know what? There's been a few because there was the Simpsons game, which was not. Hang on. Now, my experience... yeah, there was. A, there's been a few. My the first my... one was Bad vs. Space, Space Mutants. The, my, yeah. Okay, my experience of Simpsons games is Bad vs. Space Mutants. That isn't the first one, by the way. There was one before that. Um, Simpsons arcade, the arcade game, which was amazing. In my eyes, I, I loved that game, that, that you could play four players and you could play Marge. Was it Marge, Homer, Lisa, Lisa and, and Bart? Bart. Yeah, I'm sorry, to... Chris, um, just interrupted. Uh, Space Mutants was the first one. Oh, whatever. Um, <laughs> and the, uh, there's, an, uh, there's one other one I played, which was very, very, very disappointing. It's a casual game called Simpsons Tap Out. And it was basically <clears throat> a... A, a cash cow. It was a. It was a free to play. You have to purchase things to make things go quicker. But you were basically building Spring, Springfield, and that concept was interesting. You had to go and do missions for different people, and but the problem is you could you paid for speeding things up, and some things you couldn't do without buying. And it is like just pay, let me you- let me pay for the game. You know, I wanted that experience without all of the yeah, and it's still very popular apparently as well. One of the things that's funny about doing Springfield is that when you watch The Simpsons, Springfield is an amorphous city. Like, sometimes Homer can look out the backyard and see the nuclear power plant, and sometimes it's like 70 miles away, and they live like it's near a mountain, an ocean, a desert, and everything. <laughs> so, whenever they make a game version of it, each game version of Springfield is totally different. Yeah. Which is quite funny because I've played a few of the 3D ones. Like, there's The Simpsons game, which is just that. And that's like a third person thing, but you can play as all four characters at the moment their own, you know, abilities. And then hit and run is like a GTA clone type thing where you open world driving around. How how they're like what are any they're of them okay. any good? They're okay, like they're not they're not offensive and, and annoying and terrible, but they're not great or memorable either. That's the best I can say about them. They're they're all right, they're sort of like they what if you know back when I uh, used to rent games, they were a rental type game. You could rent one over a weekend and have a laugh with it. Mm. Did anyone ever play the um, uh, Peter Jackson's King Kong? I've got it, and I, I, again, it's one of those that I have t- been told is okay. It's it was the first terrible. game I got for my 360. I actually got it with my 360 on release day. Um, it pissed a lot of people off because it was, I think, the only game you could get that from just. Playing the game, you got a thousand achievement points. <laughs> but it basically mm. split into two lines. You played as Jack. Help us out, Lou. Drisco? Jack Black. Drisco. Drisco. And King Kong, and he kind of like the story was yeah. like ran a parallel to each other. Um, it was it was fun, you know. You got to beat up dinosaurs as a big monkey, and you got to shoot giant uh, shoot giant centipedes as a man. Didn't you play my copy of it, Sam? I think I played a demo of it. I think you borrowed my copy. Because I, I, I got it, and then it, uh, I did just never played it. I've got it on the PS3 or PS2. <sighs> I didn't yeah, I realize yeah. this game existed. I've never even heard of it. Really? Uh, and I'm actually slightly annoyed that Peter Jackson is so bloody um, arsy that he wanted his name at the front of the game. Mm, well, Apparently he was quite involved in its production or so, I'm told. Peter Jackson's I can tell. bad taste. <laughs> there's, just, there's a movie that should have a game made for it. That would be excellent. That'd just be <laughs> random. That that wouldn't be good. <laughs> I'd love to play as Robert the alien with his hammer. Yeah. Um, there's one other one that we have mentioned on previous shows, and I can't remember which show we mentioned it on, but um, old Commodore 64 game called uh, Ghostbusters. That yeah. You might remember. I think yeah. there was a few Ghostbusters games. Yeah, they're all. It was on all the bits. The one on the Spectrum, I think. You basically there was you, you had to pick a car. So you could pick one of the all the different cars, including the hearse. Yep. Um, you'd kit it out with loads of kit. You'd like buy the kit and put it onto the car, and then you had to go to different buildings in the city and catch ghosts. And yep. it was a side side screen where you had to yeah yeah I, I watched, get to ghost them. I watched a long play of it recently because I was like I remembered about the game. It was before we started Resident Arcade, and I remembered about it, and I was like, God, I wonder I wonder if if it actually is completable because I I had no idea what to do in it. It was so. Uh, the gatekeeper and the 
Keymaster just ended up getting together every single time I played it. But I don't think I ever got past Slimer. Well, he's, he's the yeah, Slimer ghost. was really fast, wasn't was he? he? No, all there right. was. <laughs> no, they're all got. They're all Slimer. All of the Are ghosts. That? Yeah. All right. They're all basically uh, well, Slimer, and they just get faster. And uh, but there's a technique uh, to, to catching them. The thing is, I could catch them. sensor. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And this is what you basically had to do. But you, uh, you, you got as many traps as you could. The Hoover hoovered up ghosts when you're driving along the uh, to to different jobs. Uh, the traps were how many ghosts you could have be, uh, how many jobs you could do before you went back home. And the marshmallow sensor obviously uh, reduced or stopped the marshmallow monster from coming. I can't remember. I always lost, though. It was so difficult. So can I, can difficult. I ask you a question? What was the point in the driving bit that we're looking at now? There's uh, ghosts that came past occasionally. There's a PK was meter there? at the bottom, and it was just to waste time. And oh. yeah, ghosts appeared. So the, all of the ghosts looked like this. <laughs> Look at his the... face. They're all smiley as well, all dead happy. <laughs> They're all through the David Brett dance. <laughs> Come and jump in. It's a, it's a, it's a, small, <laughs> it's a small aside here. What the, what the fuck was going on with the Commodore 64's colour palette? Seriously? I'm just going to play the music. Yeah. Because I remember this and it was particularly great. What's wrong with that colour palette, like? It's awful. It's like someone just arbitrarily... It's like going to the, the B&Q mixing desk and asking for real colours. Look, look at... Isn't colour a matter of preference? Yeah, I think that's Just because the Spectrum Sinclair was just vivid hair your eye colours on every yeah. game. Yeah, it was mathematical colours. These were just colours plucked out of thin air. It's like, we need a kind of greenish and a brownish colour and yeah. a reddish colour. And none of them were actually colours, they were just ish colours. <laughs> just just the invented the music, new colours for the game. Anyway, turn that off. Get carried away with that. <laughs> <sighs> There it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, it, it, the noise that it makes as well when you hoover ghosts up. It goes. That's the actual <laughs> noise it makes when That's you hoover the actual ghosts. Noise. That's the noise I make when I do that noise. It is indeed. Yeah, anyway, I thought I was going to get a, a mm -hmm. noise then. <clears throat> is it possible that we've actually got pretty much the whole through this show without mentioning who we're ball? It is. I don't even yeah. know. Yeah, that's my words. The um, purveyor of ultimate, disgracefully bad computer shit, game listen. films. Yeah. Who? What? Uh, right. Yeah, I don't, I've not seen any of the movies, but basically, he's a German guy who makes terrible movies and makes about eight movies a minute, <laughs> and they're all like terrible tie-ins that somehow get hold of a a B-list celebrity who was once yeah. an A-list celebrity. He's like he's had um he's had uh, uh Ben Kingsley in these movies and stuff like that. It's just bizarre. Like, it just feels the, like he's uh, running yeah. a front for a drug running business or something. <laughs> he made face. the Postal movie. Did yeah. he do Ghostbusters 2? No, oh, that was uh, uh, Iron Man. Because oh, that was a terrible game. I've got me. Um, oh, House of the Dead, Alone in the Dark, Alone in the Dark 2, Blood Rain, Blood Rain 2, Deliverance, Blood Rain the Third Reich. Far Cry. <laughs> the King, A yeah, Dungeon Sea Tale. Far Cry, Postal. yeah, he did a Far Cry. They said they're so bad that they just they like they like straight to DVD quality. Now I was reading down and I still didn't quite understand how it works, but basically there was a there was there was a loophole in Germany where um, any film that you made you could get a fifty percent tax break on your investment. So the point was is that it, for somehow however that worked out, he could make a terrible film that was financially not very successful, but he would still make <laughs> money out of it. Mythalon and Chaz just said they did a Kickstarter a while back and didn't get any funding. <laughs> 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 what was it you would tell me about a if, if, if anyone criticised his movie, he basically offered them a boxing match. Yeah, but, well, it's it's essentially, he got, he got into a bit of a flame war with um, Rich Kianka, who uh, used to run it's something been, awful, awful. Uh, Low Tax. Um, so he, basically, Rich had uh, reviewed a few of his movies and said they were terrible. So he, he challenged Rich to a boxing match, and if he won the boxing match, then it somehow proved that his movies weren't terrible. This, this now, totally Uwe Ball out. is... Uwe Ball is an ex-professional boxer, <laughs> and Mitch Lotax Kianka is a skinny... Yeah, weighs skinny, about three stone. <laughs> skinny internet nerd. <clears throat> so he got, he got he knocked on his ass basically, by this, this <laughs> meathead German director. And I think he's just yeah. done that since now. If it, it, Criticism should be answered with a punch of the face in a boxing ring <laughs> where it's legal. So um, yeah, he, he, he calls himself Raging Ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite good. 
<laughs> that's probably that's probably better than the writing in any of his movies as well. Uh, are you so, playing the trailer here? Uh, no, playing The oh. Walking Dead, as you can ah. see. Um, ah. This this is uh, this is not strictly a movie tie-in, but you know a good series tie-in, and very good <clears> at that. Uh, we've talked about it before on previous shows. It's not. I think again, there's a lot of hype train around it in my eyes. Um, it's not from playing through the first se series. It's not as good as people go on about. People really rave about it. I'd it, say the same is true of the series itself. Um, I, well, personally, I do. I'm not that big a fan of The Walking no, Dead, but it's EastEnders with zombies. The pilot was amazing, but that's yeah. it in my eyes but I mean my wife is a very very big fan but she's a she's basically the zombie queen my wife so um, the comic series is good comic series is good I haven't read them but um, <laughs> yeah um, again I thought I'd give it an honourable mention we've talked about it plenty of times so we're not gonna not gonna go right it does make you feel I think that's the main thing about the, the game for me there's a few in fact there's a lot of really annoying moments in it such as whenever you're playing the game. <laughs> in my eyes, it's not fun to play, and it it's it's not even it doesn't even give you like a sense of urgency or anything like that. It just it just feels annoying. It feels like most of the time I'm just clicking buttons to get to the next cutscene. Mm. In my eyes, that's my criticism of it. But the cutscenes and the writing and the acting and the you know the 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 quick time events you have to make during cutscenes. I think they're quite good. That gives you that sense of urgency that you do need. But yeah, and I'm, uh... um, it does do decision making where you have to you you have to make a decision where neither one of your options is is what you want to do. And I know you can, again you can say that the choices might not in the overall narrative make a massive difference. But again, like I said before, they make a difference to the the characters. Like she guesses what it's really about. So yeah. You might have to pick between two people dying, but you don't want either of them to die. Sort yeah. of situation. I've been in that situation. I've actually, uh, I actually played through the whole first season, picking on one or two individual people because they were just being assholes to me. And I, 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 and the amount. Of, in fact, what's the boy's name? Ben. Ben. Yeah. The one who you find in the woods. I, I was well. Let's not spoil it for anyone. But anything else? I, when, when. Basically, the whole game, everybody you get an option to kill pretty much everybody in the game. So I'm not spoiling anything by saying that. Um, when when it whenever I had the option to kill Ben, I would try and kill him, but he just wouldn't die. And because I I disliked him, but my wife really really took to him, and she was like, "Oh, for you, I feel sorry for him. Why are you doing that? Why are you being nasty to him? Because he's a twat. Because he's a coward. Because he's doesn't help himself, and he's not helping anybody else. He's selfish, you know." But yeah, uh, it, yeah. Obviously, there's, there are moments when you can kill him, but I obviously didn't make the right choices at the right times. Um, so I think we're we're pretty much coming to the end of the show, I believe. Uh, we've unless there's anything else that anyone wants to mention. I'm just looking through the list, and we've pretty much picked all the uh, decent stuff. I think. Yeah, I, mean, I think I think we covered it quite well. I think uh, we got to the bottom of maybe what it is that we like and dislike about. The, the whole idea of of a tie in. Mm. Yeah, um I think it's authenticity to me. And it's whether or not it feels like the original material. But it's the same the same applies to movies that are made from books, you know? If mm. if yeah. that movie doesn't conform to your personal uh, belief of what the book was about and what the book was uh what the visions in you know the the, the vi yeah, the vision of the book was, and everyone's got their own personal opinion about books. We've said this before. It's um, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't sit with me. I think. Yeah, it's 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 a lot harder. I mean, with a book, the 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 biggest decisions that the people adapting the book have to do is what to drop, how to condense it into something which can be digestible as a movie. With a game, you have you you have a story that is just for you when you play that game. Mm. And so, if you like that game, that is your story. Well, yes. I mean, we, we've talked about this before. Again, with the the story doesn't necessarily have to be non-linear in order for it to be your experience either. So you can play a game and 
not everyone's going to go down that corridor that you went down to see if there was a secret collectible there or something you know that's what makes games interesting and to me i would rather play games for the rest of my life and never watch a movie again if i ha if i had to choose between games and movies games all the way 100 percent a million percent I, I i you know i easy 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 choice for me that i suspect um sam will probably agree with me on this but i i'd be very i think it'd be very hard to pick between the two actually sophie's choice kind of scenario right there i reckon i know where you're coming from and a couple of years back i may have been in the same situation but now i've spent a number of years without watching films as fanatically as i did and you're talking to someone with a dvd collection like i've got a, i've got a bigger dvd collection than sam has and he's a film buff you know but it do you know do you know i can tell you not a big a film buff because you've still got dvds oh blu-rays <laughs> and dvds and stuff i've got i've got a section of blu-rays because i've got but... i've got some tapes of some films i want <laughs> i taped them off deli <laughs> i had to pause it when adverts came on <laughs> <laughs> But you know what I mean? It's like, I, I, I've got all these films, I've watched them all once at least, most of them, anyway. And I don't know, I just... Films, to me, are... It requires two hours of my dedicated concentration, or three hours, or however long the film is, in order for me to absorb that film and take entertainment from it. I don't have two hours to sit down and dedicate to it. I, if, I, if I do have two hours, I'd rather play a game and I'd rather make not my own story, but I'd rather make my own entertainment in the game. I'd rather spend two hours walking around one room looking at every single pixel than spend two hours going down a vision of I suppose a director that maybe isn't something that I want to watch. I don't know. I, 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 can't, I can't really explain that very well, I don't think. I think I know where you're coming from with it. I understand it. Yeah. It's dictated it's just, it's... to me. It's the same thing as television. Television to me, I, I I'd never. I I mean, I only watch television because again, my wife watches it now. But previous to my wife moving in, um, I wasn't married by the way when she moved in. We, you know, yeah. the, she didn't just marry. And, you know, but um, the the reason that I, I don't like television as it stands is because it it tells me when things are on. On demand stuff, yep, cool, cool, happy with that. Um, you know, stuff that I've downloaded and 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 watch, uh, I'm fine with that if it's a series that I'm enjoying and things like that. But even now, it's I'd still, I'd easily forego watching South Park and Family Guy and um, Orange Is the New Black and Arrested Development and all of the all of the sh even Breaking Bad and Sopranos and The Wire and all them shows that I love. If 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 someone said to me now you've got a choice right, play games or wipe all of the memories of those out of your out of your mind, oh. I'd I'd be I'd choose games, easily. Easy. I think the big difference that I see is if 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 you're watching a movie you're getting told a story, mm. and it's getting told to you in a in, in quite a matter of fact way. If you're reading a book, then fair enough you're still getting told a story, but there's a, there's a lot of the element that's left up to you yeah you can imagine it yourself you can imagine what the characters look like sound like when you're playing a game it's kind of like a cross between them two you are getting dictated a story and the visuals are set for you but you get to kind of change the story to a certain extent it goes to back to the immersion thing though that we were yeah. talking about a few episodes ago um yeah. the immersion in a game is much more than it ever will be in a film Yes, but it's harder to do. It's harder to make a game give you the same feelings that a movie would. But that wasn't or what I said. It's, I'm not, I don't care about how hard it is to make them games or them films. And and I know I might I might have to disagree there because these days, films are be sorry games are becoming very cinematic and very. Um, you know, driven. But I mean, they've even went from cutscenes and cinematics to taking that cutscene and cinematic away and giving you control of the character while the cinematic's occurring, which yeah, I think is a, a brilliant, a brilliant thing. Yeah. It is. I, and that's, I mean, that's the episode we had last year. week, it was all about game moments, and we did mm. go into quite a lot of detail about some of these cinematics and the way it draws you in. I mean, we did talk about a lot of deaths, but obviously, death's one of those things that does 
have an impact on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's a maturing genre. It's a maturing medium. Oh, and, um, you know, books and movies have had the, the advantage of being around for, respectively, like thousands of years and, and over 100 years. But games have only been around for the last 30, 40 years tops. And they are still maturing. And only in the last maybe 10, five or 10 years of games being able to to do this on a level where they can do photorealism and, and, and immerse you properly into that. So we are well, going to see that develop, I think. I think also as a medium, they've, they've had to fight to be appreciated. Oh, um, definitely. I know that cinema oh, yeah. might have been, has been a thing of like, you know, well, cinema is just a trite, you know, flipped thing. Books are always going to be the true art form or whatever. You know, that, and that, and that, you know, in a lot of ways, books are always going to be, in some ways, the ultimate because you can never, the books are always going to have the most depth and all the, you know, like a thousand pages of story in a book. Uh, always no, going to be, I've could got, always be more, you know. I've got to disagree there. I think games will become much more. Uh, much more uh, involved than books ever will be because again as Steve said books are dictating a story to you even though you well, form the world and the visions based on the based on the descriptions that the author give you gives you yeah 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 no I, it's still I, linear I think my, I, anyway besides that my, my point was is that they've had to they've only just recently actually had a, a shred of what the what the general consensus would be of legitimacy like They've, they've been seen as a, as, a, as a game for children, as a toy for children. Mm, and yeah. in their 40 year history, it's only in the last, again, maybe five or 10 years at absolute most that they've become more seen as an artistic medium of expression uh, with uh, any kind of depth to it. There are still people of a certain generation that will talk about them as just silly things that, that kids play. And it's like they're so not that anymore. They still can be that, the mm. same way that a, a, a book can still be spot the dog fell over on his bum uh, or it could be you know Ulysses do you know what I mean that, yeah. That, yeah. The games could have that range too but it, it's only just now that people are actually starting to see it uh, and I'd said my argument is that they can they have potential to be much more immersive and realistic to to the human mind uh, one with all the peripherals that are coming out, the VR, the set. I keep talking about haptic feedback suits and you know smell a vision and you know all that kind of stuff. That that can all be put into games eventually. I'm not saying it will. I'm not saying that's what you know. All that stuff's great, but it the, not just that. The the fact that you are making the story that makes it to me more interesting. Before we finish. What, I'm going to ask each one of you, each one of you, the same question that I just answered. So, what, what, what? If you only had one choice for the rest of your life, because none of you have actually answered this, would you choose games or films? Games. I had a feeling Steve would say that. Why? I don't know. You, I, 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 you, you, you do love your games, and I, I very rarely hear you talk about films. I'll be honest. I'm not saying you don't like films, but. <coughs> I, I used to like films a lot. Um, I just don't know. I've just fallen out of the habit of watching them. I'm going to say that despite the fact that it's a difficult choice, I'll, I'm going to have to say games. I've got, I've got, yeah, ga- I've got tattoos of games and I haven't got tattoos of movies. Hmm. <laughs> I would say games as well, it, but, but with, a very, with a very, very heavy heart, I would make that choice. Would you have your pet lip out? Yeah, well, maybe... <laughs> The, the, there's also the additional, um, the additional addition. <laughs> Not the right word. There's also the fact that games have formed a lot of my life, and they've also formed a lot of um, my friendships. I would not be mm. friends with any of you guys if it wasn't for games. No, it's not like we'd all That's... go down the cinema and yeah. hang out there for forty-eight hours. I, mean, I may, cool. I may have talked to Sam about. You know, if games didn't exist, he was into films, I was into films, the same music we're into, that all of that kind of mushed us together as friends, you know. It was Yeah, well But with you two, Lou and Lou and Steve, I would not have known you if it wasn't for games. And you two were arguably two of my best friends on the planet. So Steve and I lived uh, used to live across the road from each other, but the majority of our childhood was spent with games in various forms. And when we weren't playing games, we were outside trying to act them out in real life or t- talking about games or... Or sitting in your kitchen trying to design games. Mm. Yeah, yeah, for hours on end with <laughs> square paper. Yeah. 
I think, yeah, so, I think you get more feedback as a human. As a human being, I think there's more feedback from games of some sort. It's like board games, even board games. If I had to choose between films and board games for the rest of my life, <laughs> I don't play board games now. But I think if I think about it hard and fast, I think I'd probably get more... <laughs> Is that the wrong fr- turn of phrase? Oh, you say you pick. <laughs> yeah, you pick Monop- I was going to say you pick Monopoly of a Fight Club. Give me a break. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think I would because I think I if I've watched I've watched Fight Club twenty eight times. Right? <laughs> Sorry, it's, a, it's an in joke. Sorry, it's an in joke. Yeah, well, kind of. Um, <laughs> but I've, I've watched Fight Club a lot of times. Right? I love the. I love it. It's a brilliant film. I, I love a lot of films. And I've watched them over and over and over, but every time I play Monopoly, Monopoly is a bad example because I don't like. But I'm, yeah. I'm every time you example. play Monopoly, you get a raging hard. Every on. time I play Monopoly, I get I get entertainment from it, and it never gets boring because it's a game and it's dynamic, and the people who are playing it, I'm playing it with, add to it, and it's a social exp- a social experience. Whereas a, a film, I can sit and watch it with someone, but I tell you what. You start talking to me while I'm watching a film that I'm interested in, and I've not seen before. I'll tell you to shut the fuck up. Because I want to, I want to watch the film and take it in, and you're not helping, mate. Shut up, you know. But again, all right, all right. No, but I'm saying that's that's how that's how I work with films. Not everyone's the same. Some people are, ha- are fine talking about talking between each other. I know some people when I go to the cinema with them, and I'm uh, we're watching a, a film, and I, I whisper to them, "Oh, this is going to happen," or something like that. Hate it, absolutely hate it. You know, like, and, and I understand it because I'm kind of the same. Anyway, I'm rambling on a little bit now. We've all established that games are better than films. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> Good night. Till next week. Bye-bye. Good night. See, See you later. later.